The following Talking Chimps podcast is a conversation with my good friend and fellow colleague coach, Jeremy Borzillo. Awesome conversation, really enjoyed it, a lot of fun. We went all over the place. I hope you guys enjoy it. We talked about the riots all across America, our two cents on that, agent provocateurs. We talked about nutrition science and the details around gaining muscle mass and losing body fat. We talk about Jeremy Epstein's new Netflix documentary and the, the craziness that surrounds him and, and his uh, sex trafficking and, and sex crime ridden uh, existence, which is just blows your mind when you when you really dive down those rabbit holes. Uh, we talk about crocodiles, animals, the crazy nature that exists throughout our world, eating crocodiles, and we talk a lot about Jeremy's personal growth and development, the books he's been reading, and how he's been using this time as effectively as possible for himself to grow, develop, get better, and set some personal goals and goals that we can set together to hold ourselves accountable and work towards uh, bettering ourselves. So I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. This is Talking Chimps number 21, available on all podcast platforms, YouTube. Hope you enjoy. Anyway, Jeremy Borzillo, where were oh. we? Shall we start this podcast again? Are we, uh, are we live? Fuck it, we'll do it live. Anyway. We'll do it live. <laughs> all right, we were just talking, but we got uh, uh, the camera cut off, so we'll just put right. that audio at the end for those who want to hear that. So, yeah, you know, we're just talking shit, so. Talking shit, talking chimps. Talking chimps. Just a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of DOCs. DACs. DACs. With dog-ass cunts. Anyways. So, Jeremy was just taking us through the, the books that he's been reading in this yeah. time. Can you just replay what you were just Sorry, about to yes, say? Sorry, yes, okay. So, um, I've, after this whole quarantine sort of period, um, shut down lockdown whatever happened um i went home and i was like what do i suck at well i suck at uh in terms of reading i'm not i don't feel i'm very well cultured in terms of that sort of stuff so in terms of what i've been reading a lot more about is stoicism and just like being a better human because we're talking about human first athlete second in terms of you know projecting pretty much good vibes into the world if you will so um one of the stuff that and on the stoicism i've been doing that because i've been um listening to a lot of the live calls the Dr. Pete, Dr. Pete Coleman from the, um, Strength Culture. So Strength Culture been putting out some um, some chats, if you will, on mindset and just like, you know, how to sort of survive during this lockdown period. There's no... And you can also, if you know, mental health-wise, you can also, if you just want to, you know, chill for a week, you can chill for a week. If you want to just, you know, if you want to work as fucking hard as you can, we'll go for it. But it's like... There's no one way how you should feel during this time. Mm. How you... We're, we're in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Like, Jesus Christ. No, we will not experience this again. Like, in terms of this... this. Okay, so... Uh, you know my thoughts I, on I this. I know your thoughts on this. And, this and he I, sees uh, my face and he knows... Oh, hold on. <laughs> no, Go what on. I mean by that is like... <laughs> we're not going to be under this amount of fucking duress. This amount of stress. In terms, like, there's obviously... We, all the sorts of stuff that are going to come every five, ten years in terms of like little mini ways but not this amount where but it might but it, how can you say that so certainly i can't say it so certainly but it's what i believe like i, but I can't say it as a matter of fact yeah because who the fuck knows right that um, that's the answer who knows <laughs> yeah but anyway so i've been reading the daily stoic um and it's so it says 366 meditation on wisdom um, perseverance and the art of living and it's i read this um every morning so my morning routine is usually I'll just get up, um, go for a walk, uh, probably three to four. So about a couple of Ks and then just read uh, this. And it's a lot on like problem solving, a mindset and just like being sort of the best human you can be in terms mm. of sort of stuff. Oh, give us the other way. You can have a look. Yeah, I might, I might read some uh, passages. Yeah, so find something. So. Ryan Holiday's... Um, pretty solid. I'm reading his... Uh, the smell of a new book. <laughs> Am I the only one who likes that? No, nah, I... I I like um I like good smells and I like the new book smell. <laughs> uh, and you can interpret that any way you want, but uh, I like it. Anyways, um, yeah. So I've just been reading that. I've also been one of the big ones as well, and I've already read it recently. Is um the Resilience Project by Hugh Van Kylenberg. What? And, <laughs> and this is one that um wow Amy sort of I'll give that to you. So I was one. No, I just saw this book. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend just got this book. So. Oh, did she? Yes. So there you oh. go. I, I thought this was just some random book, but apparently yeah, it's, Carrie will love it. That's it's going around now. So basically, um, with the Resilience Project, it focuses on gratitude, empathy, and mindfulness. So a lot of 
with gyms shutting down and everyone sort of a lot of people being out of income if you will it's hard to forget the the good things in life and you or and you go around you just like you take for granted a lot of things and i'm not someone that's going to be like you know fuck this you know i'm just like i'll Trying to explain. Uh, sorry, I just That's okay. take your time. In terms of this, like, I'm very grateful. In terms of reading this book, I'm very grateful for what I've got. So, a lot of things I wasn't grateful for in terms of like, I get to go for a run. I get to you know experience nature. I think going outdoors and experience the great beyond and just seeing everything as it is. It's just fucking brilliant. So. Um, that's been one of the great things that I've um, sussed from that as well. So you've read this, the Resilience yeah, Project? Yeah, read it all. So what's, what's the kind of takeaway you were just saying? Um, be, gr- be grateful for a lot of things you have Yeah. because there's a lot of things that other people don't. So for where uh, we're trying to look at you know, other people's in like war-torn countries, looking at people in Iraq, looking at pe- um, homeless people in India, it's like, and that's where Hugh um, went when he was younger and what's the, um, the resilience project is based on as well which I don't want to give too much away like you can read the book but, but you know you know what's interesting about that is I think often you need to actually go to these places you need yeah. to travel to get perspective like I don't sometimes reading a book you get that oh okay you understand it like you empathize with it but you don't really internalize it the only time I've ever gone to a homeless-ish um, low socioeconomic sort of place in terms of um with this sort of stuff has been Fiji when I was 10 mm. and I went to a school. That's the only time I've been overseas, but I went to a school where it was that sort of stuff where um, the kids were very poor and some of the greatest joys in life they had was just like, you know, going to school and just enjoying that. So, yeah, I, I'll i have more thoughts as they come to me in terms of with For that. Sure. So I can put that on you know Instagram, just like, you know, a story or whatever. But uh, yeah, so that's been a really good book as well. Uh, this, is, this is a fun one. So I've just... Reading that, so um, read it out for the, the Chris Judd, the Chris Judd autobiography. So it's a more of a fun one for me. So um, Chris Judd's an AFL player. So for our American listeners, uh, Australian Football League player, and or New South Wales people as well. Uh, so Victorians will love him. So he's to play um, for West Coast and Carlton. So Carlton, yeah, I barrack for. So yeah, he played for them, and yeah, he's. His sort of work ethic, and I'll show you that as well. I don't know if you want to look at that as well, but um, a, I don't, a nice portrait. Yeah. So he, and his in terms of his sort of um, outlook on the world, and just like his training and stuff, and he works very hard in training. Just yeah, I like the book. Anyways, another one as well, which is mentioned on this podcast, uh, "Relentless" by Tim Grover. Mm-hmm. So I remember uh, I, this was recommended to me by former guest of the podcast, Ethan Wilson. And then you and Jay were talking about it as well in the um, last dance sort of chats as well. And I found I found Tim Grover's book to be really, really good in terms of just like understanding and just like knowledge and especially for athletes as well. And it's like he did not give a fuck. Like he's – it's sort of like a Jocko Willinick in terms of that sort of stuff as well. Like, you know, if you're like, if you're like, like shouldn't be late. You should always, you know, work hard. Always give me 100%. If you can't give me 100%, then why the fuck are we here? Like, why are we wasting our time um, doing this sort of work if you don't put the trust in me as your trainer, as your coach? Um, And in terms of the way Michael Jordan, uh, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, all those guys sort of... Kobe as well, yeah. They sort of approach everything. Like, Kobe was fucking nuts in the way that he approached things as well. So, which I don't... Yeah, everyone knows about, like... Um, who's watched The Last Dance as well. And yeah, I I think during this time as well, it's been, for me, it's been a lot of just working on myself and just trying to get better into it. Yeah, sorry. Can yeah. I read? I'm reading, I'll just pull it up on yeah. a passage. You might oh, if I read it? No, nah, go nuts. Um, because Team USA, watching Team USA play in the Olympics is one of my funnest <laughs> things that I could do in yeah. watching basketball. Have you seen them play? Definitely. So yeah. the 2012 Olympics was especially like, that was like highlight. Like some of the best of the best basketball you'll ever see. 2012 Olympics as Team USA played Australia, Kobe was having a surprisingly weak first half. It happens. Player has something else on their mind. They just feel off. They can't get focused for whatever reason. Most guys who start a game that fini- that way finish even worse. But the greats can recognize they need to turn it around. And that's what Kobe did. Hitting four three-pointers in just over a minute. 
leading the Americans to 119 to 86 victory. Just searching for something to activate the Black Mamba, which was his uh, alter ego nickname, yeah. for those who don't know. He said after the game, just finding his way back into the zone. Michael was the only player I've ever known who was completely in the zone every time he played. Always a cleaner. Even in games where he'd cruise a little, it would eventually come out. I recall one night in Vancouver during the Bulls' 72 win season, everyone was tired from the long annual November road trip, and it was a rare game when the Bulls were getting killed. But the fourth quarter, Michael had only 10 points, and the Grizzlies' Derek Martin started talking a little trash at him. You never, ever challenge Michael Jordan and expect to come out ahead. Michael literally stopped on the court, looked at the guy, shook his head, and said, let a sleeping dog lie. The dark side said, Killed this motherfucker and he went into the attack <laughs> mode straight into the zone. Result unstoppable. He went on unbelievable Terry score, scoring 19 points in the quarter on the way to a Bulls win. And Derek Martin spent the rest of the game on the bench. <laughs> Shut your mouth, Derek Martin. Shut your fucking mouth, man. Damn, that's <laughs> nice. Win is win. Yeah. And Whew. that man, like, just in terms of just the Jordan persona, and that's where a lot of sports. Um, athletes can go really well is developing an alter ego for themselves and it's like he might be Michael Jordan off the court and he might be a bit more relaxed and chill for example like playing golf oh, I know like, where you're going with this yep but then on court he is a he's Jordan he's a fucking snake yeah he's a fucking you know motherfucker that's gonna kill you so yeah, yeah I really rated that sort of so you taking from that what was kind of the takeaway from the one? Uh, yeah, I got to commend Tim Grover. He looks great. Like, in the, especially in the documentary, he looks really healthy. He looks yeah. great. He looks like, you know, some trainers and coaches in their later parts of their careers, they kind of lose it. He yeah. looks like he's staying on top of it. So, respect. Yeah. But exactly right. What was your kind of takeaway from Tim Grover's Relentless? I think a lot of the stuff that I say to myself, whether it be like, you can always sort of Goggins sort of um, mentality as well. You can always push a little bit more. Your mind is going to be the first thing to go. And I think you can train your mind and callous it to where you can always push beyond your limits. Yeah. That's going to make you a better, first of all, athlete. You know, you always like, and you're just going to, you're going to be better in all parts of your life as well. And there's probably some other points that I've forgotten as well. Like, um, I'm not great with like after I read books, I try and suss it out. But I notice you, there's yeah. no highlights or written notes. Do you ever highlight a book? I know I do that uh, every time. No, I probably should. Uh, I'd recommend it. Yeah, I ha which is why I probably I blank out sometimes at certain things. Like, uh, yeah, that might be something I have to well, look into. Well, the reason I encourage that as well is because, look, I think it's amazing that you're where people are reading, they're constantly trying to absorb knowledge, but like knowledge is only useful if it's applied. And so yes. now yeah. I think that's why highlighting, taking notes, because you can pull parts and then it's like, all right, I'm going to use this information. These are the best parts that I need to now take action with because I think we can get caught up in just reading and absorbing knowledge. I know I have, and I think I'm doing something productive, but really I'm just like mentally masturbating, you know, <laughs> yes. to, 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 yes. to the new information. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I find resourceful. No, that's a great point. Work is just fucking, I, like... I used to, even around here as well, like, I used to just work to work. And it's like, oh, like, um, like Brett Buffalo was talking about in with you. It's like, you can go, okay, I'm going to work from fucking 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You know, I'm going to coach every single person here. I'm going to train. I'm going to show you motherfuckers who the top dog is. And it's like, well, what did you actually do? Like, and then you might go home and you might, you know, read some research and then you're done. But you don't do, like, your coach here. But then other than that, like, what the fuck do you do? Like, how else are you bettering yourself? in terms of everyday life and that was pretty much my life for like still, still is like apart from obviously the pandemic but still is it's like that's a lot of what i do which is fine because i needed it but yeah that's something i'd probably consider coming forward come back here would be more trying to steer away still focusing on snc but focusing on other points of life as well and other sorts of absolutely endeavors so and you're doing it man like yeah philosophy stoicism and then yeah I try my best try my best like i understand i'll never be like for example i listened to the ivan podcast and that was very very deep in terms of his sorts of um understandings and a lot of spirituality mm. that he was talking about as well i'll never be like that so if i can be you know, somewhat in tune with my feelings, my thoughts, emotions. 
why do you say you never be like that? I mean, it doesn't. I, really, I don't it, know. It just depends. What do you want? Yeah. Right. I, Who I've, do you want to be? Yeah. I don't know. I just I don't I don't feel like I like to have a basic grasp of it. But in terms of who knows, I might go in deep and just you know suss it out. And yeah, I don't know. Well, it obviously doesn't sound like it really speaks to you on that deep of a level. Like it's important to you, but it's not as important to you to go on a thirty day fast to get closer to God. Yeah, right. That which I found very that was fucking awesome. It's it's good to hear. Like he's pushing the limits of the human body. I guess. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you got here? There's a the last one. And then the four agreements, which was mentioned by Casey Drew on this podcast as well, which goes into stoicism as well. And yes, yeah, so I'll read the. F- the four laws so be impeccable with your word don't take anything personally don't make assumptions and always do your best and i think during this time um don't especially with me as well not taking anything personally in terms of what uh, not that i've had anyone really say anything bad really during this time to me but not take so you know some people try and give a lot of constructive criticisms and what I'd do in the past is I would shut down when people would try and offer me criticism. And then I, li- and now it's a little bit better where like I'm taking on board what people are saying, but I'd always take it as like a personal attack. So I think yeah. it's what's good now is like I'm taking, you know, taking it more in my stride and just like, you know. Why did you think you took it as a personal attack in the past? I don't know. It's just how I am. Like I just take, I just take shit personally. Like it's just. I don't know what sort of trait leads me to that because um, I'm a bit of an emotional person in that regard. But, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm just too emotional and that sort of thing as well. And it's like I can't – I couldn't take people saying, you know, you could have done this better and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 I'm doing this, you know, great and stuff like that, which I wasn't. But yeah. I don't uh, – you, you call yourself, like, not that emotional – well, no, sorry, you say you're an emotional person. I don't see you express that much emotion. When do you – when do you do it? When when do you become emotional? It's I I don't know. It's not it's not around. I just don't know how to explain. It. It's not around people. Like it's not. You know, it might be at home. I just might be like chilling and stuff like that. Like I think, unless I know people personally, unless I like, you know, have a good um, rapport with them and connection, I just am very, you know, off. Like I don't really show a lot of emotion. But when you know everyone's around I show a lot of emotion so yeah I, I don't know it's just yeah anyways we're diving in it's like you, you yeah. gotta figure out who you are it's my internal monologue but I yeah I, I just yeah it's like you, your internal monologue your, the talk between your ears the self talk might be emotional but extrinsically you might not express that yeah exactly and that yeah and this might be this might be another thing for another podcast but yeah anyways so and then just yeah be impeccable with my word just saying a lot less shit which probably didn't explain the last minute of, that, of the podcast <laughs> 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 the irony uh-huh. well, hey it's a work in progress yeah. that's okay yeah and that's it's hard to figure out who you are yeah i i still yeah and I, i'm 25 and i still don't know who i am so yeah and then as no I said, more than make, yesterday <laughs> exactly and don't make assumptions always do your best so always doing my best during this time so yeah you- that's that's my this is uh, these are the one two three four five books you've been reading, and I've read also Atomic Habits. I've got to read Sapiens because I got that at home, and I uh, I was Ooh. so I was on the I was on the track. I was doing um, I was doing some sprints, and then I was like listening to your podcast as well, just during um, warm down sort of things as well. And I was listening to it, and you were talking about Sapiens, and I got the recommendation from um, Charlie, and he was like talking about it, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. So then I just bought it, had a look at it. I haven't read it yet, but... Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of moments that just blow your mind about how we got here. Yeah. You know, the millions of years that it took for us to get here, all the way from talking chimps, all the way from chimps to talking <laughs> chimps, you know, all the multiple different variations of, of uh, sapiens. So not... Because ho- homo sapien is... That's a different. Spe- that's a species. There's Homo erectus. There's Neanderthals. There's Homo f- uh, florientis, which were these like dwarf-like creatures that got uh, starved and put, and they were on an island, and so they just constantly shrunk and got smaller and smaller through the generations they lived. And um, you know, you don't really think that. You think we're the only thing. No, there was like half a dozen other sapien 
uh, species before us and how important like the advent of uh, modern agriculture and like going from hunter gatherers to, to farmers like that was probably one of the most important changes in human civilization to like rap making a progression much more rapid and, and just changing it because now we stay in one place and like the advent of of grain and wheat and how that how that was so important for um just the progression it's hard to remember or i got i want to do you know video essays and book summaries on that um maybe i will one day but it just takes so much time but it's, it's you're gonna love it i hope you love it yeah and i've i've watched um how to win friends and influence people i was watching a bit of that in your um a YouTube channel as well. Ah. Shout out Alexander Sandalis on YouTube. Anyways. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that anymore though. Oh yeah, Alexander Emmanuel. That's Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was, because I've read that as well during this time. So I was, um, yeah, and I was, I've read it. Sorry, I read I listened to, I listened to the first two, so the first two chapters you were talking about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I reckon that book should be read a lot. Uh, well, I've only read it once, probably read it again in terms of just like, being a better person to people and being able to relate, being able to make friends in this, or well, in this industry, but like in all walks of life as well, just being kind to everyone, which is a big thing during this time as well. Yeah, man. And yeah. You forget that. You're like, everybody is going through something. We don't know yeah. about it. We just, let's be a little kinder to each other. It's a smile when you walk. I mean, it's like people, I don't know. I think, People want to feel like they're doing something productive for the world, for, for these causes, these important causes, global <laughs> yeah. warming, activism, uh, discrimination, this, that. Um, and so they want to bring awareness to an issue. Let's post about it on social. Cool. Great. But like the biggest thing we all can do is just be better people for each other. Yeah. Like hug each other, smile. Gr- just, hey, next time you're walking down in the street, and people, you know, they're social distancing, you know, and some people, like, they veer off the path when you walk past them. All right, whatever. Just smile at them. Yeah. Say, hey, good morning. <laughs> and, like, I think that's how you... I, I think we we underestimate the power of small gestures and interactions that we can have with each other because they can just spark your mood. It's like, oh, I'm not alone. It's like there's another... You know, people who, like... They feel alone. They feel isolated. Like, just look up when you go for a walk. Just greet that person. That's all you need to do. You don't need to talk to them. You don't need to get uncomfortable. Just, I think if every person can do their own version of that, then this cog can move forward in a more meaningful way. And so I've been going for walks with my mum. That's great. Evenings, like two to three times a week whenever she can do it yeah. after work. And um, yeah, she'll always see people and say, you know, hello, hello. And some people say hi, some people don't. It's just, it, it's the nature of the beast. It is what it is. Yeah. But that's what I was sort of thinking about with that. And even, um, for example, like we'll have, whenever I chat to yourself or, I'll, or you know, get on our group chats and we're on Facebook and we're chatting about fucking whatever. But I, that's like one of the highlights of my day because like, love I, I love interacting with all those guys. For sure. Um, and girls as well but yeah it's because you don't know you know first of all it lifts me up because i'm like just chatting to them and i just feeling really good but also as you said you don't know what shit people go through and especially as males like fucking mental health like no one it, females i reckon a bit like they talk about it a lot more but males be just you know very you know close guard and just like very uh, like this we don't want, want to share our feelings yeah you got to be like this image of strength and this apparently yeah. this image of strength is someone who doesn't share any of their vulnerabilities <laughs> and their struggles and and but that's oh, not shit. that's not always the case <laughs> yeah right and that's what jake jake and weatherly talks a lot about that on yeah. his instagram where he's been a lot a more podcast. sort of yeah he's been very just we need to put forth um obviously positive vibes but more you know sharing of emotions which is what i've worked on during this time as well is just being a lot more open with people and just you know chat about my day what am i grateful for what do i love in this world you know the people around me like 
um, Alex, it's great to have you in my life. Or, you know, whoever, whoever else, like family. It's great to have people Same that love me and stuff. And and I love that. It's, yeah, it, that's that's one been one of the, the key to, like, from all this shit in the past, or six months, fuck, it's been a shit year in terms of all the shit that's been going on. But the good takeaway is that um, we're all not alone. And the fact that we can all band together and be as one in periods of crisis, in periods of injustice, a lot of other shit like that, it's fucking cool to see. And and I would always worry about, on the point of like people, you know, saying shit to me, like I would always worry about that. And now it's almost like I don't really care if people have a negative sort of thought about me as well. Because I'd always try so hard to try and be well-liked by everyone. Right. But... You can be the nicest person, but there's always going to be people that don't fucking like you just cause. So, you know, I've got I've got a great life. I've got you know great friends around me. Uh, I've got a great job. So, so you you're trying to find the good. Yeah. Something you can the good you have expressing gratitude towards that. Yeah. So you don't have to focus on what you don't have. Exactly. I don't not have a lot of like I don't have a ton of shit which I wish I had. Like I've pretty much got a lot of great things in my life so oh sorry yeah no that's fine um yeah i've got a i've got a lot to be thankful for so yeah yeah and, and it re, you've really put in i felt it just about half a week ago i felt it when you know these in minneapolis these these riots and it just started bubbling up and then it just exploded and then that happened in california and and um new york east coast west coast minneapolis here there i'm like Washington. The fu- when I saw when I saw that in Washington with the riots happening outside of the White House. That's fucking yeah. You know they they're trying to make as much noise, make sure you know those politicians and everybody in that house can can hear that they're not going down without a fight. Those fat cats in yeah. fucking the White House. Yeah, yeah. they're coming after it. Yeah. And I'm like, there is buildings are on fire, like towns are on fire. They're not. Like the the first thing Minneapolis did, I think it was Minneapolis, is like they, they didn't send the police. They basically left the town yeah. to the people, <laughs> and so there was no police to be seen. There was looting, fuck riots. There was burning of buildings, burning of cars, and this happened all over. Is happening all over America, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, that's terrible for them and terrible for the people involved, but. It's just an opportunity to like look outside. None of that is happening right here where we are. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Like, it could be a lot worse. You, this, this building we're in, this is a business, right? There have been, I would estimate, dozens, maybe hundreds of people's businesses, who already struggling from the pandemic, who have had their business broken into, looted or burnt down because of this situation and they come to their store the next day and everything they worked for for years and years and years is gone. And now they have to figure out a way to get their shit together, to rebuild or to just give up hope entirely. And that, like I saw this one video of the, of this African-American gentleman who uh, he, he made that comment, I worked all my life for this I, I, and now it's, and it's gone. And it's like his why why does why is he getting why does he bear the consequences for someone else's actions that had nothing to do with him? Why does he no longer get to have his business and feed his family and have his livelihood anymore? It's, well, it's just how they acted in america was just a mob mentality and i think if you're gonna leave the decisions to the people and you're all right well guys you fend for yourselves you do the you know we're not we're not bringing the police in yeah what do you reckon people are gonna do oh yeah cool we're just gonna sit here right they're gonna they're gonna fucking go nuts of course they had they had so have you have, i don't know how much attention have you paid to uh it? Oh. <laughs> I honestly have not paid... Like, I know, obviously, what has happened in terms of with the George Floyd incident and what's happened in America, but other than that, not too much. Like, 
I just fucking hate looking at shit. Like, the news is fucking shit, full stop. But the news also, like, I'm not, you know, coming into the 6 o'clock news. I'm like, fuck yeah, you know, it's going to be some positive <laughs> stories here. I'm going to see some cute dogs. I'm going to see some good shit like this. I'm coming in. Hang on, there's fucking fires. Oh, hang on. You know, um, there's been a, a death, you know, racial of a, of a racial sort of nature. Oh, shit, there's like fucking, you know, things burning down. You said looters. There's all this shit going on. And that's supposed to make me happy. That's not making me fucking happy. It's making me sad. So that's why I haven't uh, I haven't paid too much attention in terms of that. Like I get down, like even during the coronavirus. And I think Jay, um, Mr. Jay, I was talking about this as well. You would always see with the coronavirus, it would always be fucking red. And every time they yeah. go to, it would always be red, yeah. red, red. So what I'm feeling shit. I'm feeling like, you know, and I'm feeling like, oh, fuck. Fuck this shit. This, you know, coronavirus. Um, and yeah, it's just. Well, let's talk, give some context. Red because it's an emotive, emotional yeah, color that stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. And um, actually, there's been studies on like people dressing dressing in red being more perceived as more attractive, um, which okay. I've seen before. Uh, not that that's too related, but <laughs> no, it's interesting. Just, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's all good. Interesting. Um, but I, I think it's it's very fucking hypocritical from the American people because it's like what is so with this man dying it should be more towards a peaceful sort of protest so why would you let his death be in vain and first of all first of all all this coronavirus shit like so they they've been obviously this pandemic has been going on they're like oh you have to stay you know however many feet away and they've had restrictions over there lifted but then they're all like fucking close together so you dumb fucks. <laughs> you dumb shits. Because you're yeah, basically... The no way you said that. Uh, that. I listen to a lot of the Chris D'Elia podcasts. That's it. He goes, <laughs> you're boring and you're shit. But also... Um, yeah, with those guys, like... But they don't care. They, they, they don't have care. A, they have a bigger cause to fight for right yeah. now than, than some restrictions. And I understand there was a census killing. But why I... The people are not going to listen to you if you're going in, you're looting the place and you're causing destruction and you're doing all this. And it's not like it's hunky-dory here. In Australia, we've had our own issues with the Aboriginals um, in terms of how they've been treated. So it's not like where Australia is going, oh, yeah, clean fucking slate around here. But I just reckon... Look, I can say this. Like they should have probably gone about it a better way. But how... We don't know. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. They might have thought in the moment, all right, fuck, we're just going to come in and start causing some shit and maybe someone can hear us. You said something about 30 seconds ago that I wanted to comment on. Um, do you, do you, can you just recite what you'd said about 30 seconds ago, 45 seconds ago? I'd have to go to the... T- <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to the... T- no, because you, you made a mention of... <clears throat> the, the, the senseless uh, death. Yeah, okay. You, you talked about how people, they want, well, people want to get their voice heard, right? And you saying writing in this way, acting in this way is, what did you say? Not the best way to get your point across? Yeah, it's not the best way to get your message across. You just, you just, you know, you with this death and you're causing more death. They're like, people have been... Police officers have been killed from this. Civilians have been killed from this. So what are we achieving? It's now it's no longer... It is still about this guy getting killed yet, but actually not really because now it's about other people getting killed. Senseless fucking killings. And the message is being distorted through all this. So... Yes. I'm going to... Okay, let me provide some some context. Look, this... We got to go back. Like this has been like discrimination, oh, racism. Yeah. We know this has been an issue for hundreds of yeah. years, right? So there are these deep-seated roots of emotion and anger and frustration and personal turmoil. People, the, uh, people have gone through from from native landowners, which there's a whole separate topic of oh, like you yeah. know of America and, and North America of of uh, the, the Native Americans to Aboriginals in Australia. Every land has it. So we have that. But then let's talk about the issue at hand, right? Uh, the discrimination of minority groups such as African Americans. Okay, you're like y- your point has merit. It's like, well, 
how is violence and looting and rioting and and, and killing how is that an effective how do we, if we look at how do we friends and influence people if we look at basic psychology yeah one would say if you want to have and you want to convince somebody of your point of view that is an ineffective way to do that however when you have a group of people who have been persecuted and feel like they are they've lost hope because they have tried and tried and tried again to uh, protest peacefully and let's let that be known there's actual there's plenty of peaceful protests going on yeah. right it's not oh no i'm not saying there's just you know everyone's going nuts like there is still stuff going on yeah so cool so time and time again these things have happened right this is like it's been in the media for decades like every year or so there'll be like a famous um death of a there'll be like an infamous death of of a of a black or minority individual okay Colin, Ka- uh, was it Colin uh, Kaepernick? Who 2016, yeah, he, na- he kneeled during the national anthem. Right. There's some, sh- so kneeled during the national anthem to, to represent and fight for what he believed in, right? You want to say, you got- well, fucking, he got proven right because he was fighting for the same issues he was fighting for four years ago that are going around today. And everyone was like, what the fuck's this guy doing? Well, yeah, but. <laughs> You can see people, famous people, like influential people, there have been many attempts to come with this conversation in a peaceful manner. And I think there is now this strange concoction of a pandemic, people being cooped up indoors, their businesses have already been affected, money's been, t- they can't make their money, they're, they're, they're isolated, they're, they're struggling. There's every time they turn on the news, it's it's something else about this. Oh, people are dying here. Like my friends getting sick here. Blah blah blah. Here, it's like all this chaos is just bubbling, right? And then you get you light the fire. The kindling has been lit with the death of George Floyd, and they just fucking go off because it was is like a moment. It's like America and the, all these countries, like they're, we, they needed the moment to spark the fire and this just sparked the fire, man. And I think in conjunction with everything's going on, they, people are, they feel, I would imagine, they sound like they feel hopeless. They feel like they're at their wits end and they are going to go to war now to restore and ch- restore order and and fundamentally change the system that has been so flawed for so long i think it's been nine days straight you know i think i don't i don't remember this ever happening in my lifetime so systematically across america america i'm like i don't anticipate it's going to let up when i saw it popped up in other states that had nothing to do like that was like okay this is this is real serious shit right now so I, I don't think it's effective, but I don't think they have any other option right now. They, ne- they want to create change, and I think the only way they know now how to create change is through force. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. I mean, if you, no, if you disagree, it's like... No, I don't... Uh, oh, well, it's not like I'm one me. way or the other. Like, I'm just... This is what... Oh, the way you've explained it, though. Um, yeah, it's definitely very eye-opening. It's not like it in... You know, understand that but it's like yeah, yeah. i was sort of yeah and i was going from the way of like i just didn't see how violence on top of violence is going to help solve this problem but the fact that they've had people have been oppressed for so long and it's like you can only take so much shit before you snap yeah that's it You've and, well said and yeah that's yeah it's a, that's a that's a great point it's a great point there, there's um but even if you go further like if you want to get conspiracy. Oh um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard Paging, of Page and Jay Ellis, Page and Jay Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I'd love to. I'm jealous. <laughs> I got I gotta to chat to him again soon. Um <laughs> Have you heard of well one, have you seen videos of like these piles of bricks appearing on the streets oh. of certain <laughs> what are we talking? Let's 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 talk about this. Wait. <laughs> So, <laughs> pile of bricks. So, w- what I'm about to turn on the projector for those who are, are watching on YouTube and Facebook. So, 
What uh, I'm referring to is that in the streets of certain states across America, there have been, you know, giant piles of bricks um, in, w- put, you know, there's wire across them because they're, they're in these, like, they're stored in, in a little container you can access and they're just being placed uh, along the street in areas where that, ha- that is an area that uh, has a high prevalency for, for recent rioting, okay? Mysterious piles of bricks discovered at riots. Let's have a look at this. Get this, pile of bricks literally being stationed near the sites where these protests and riots ultimately become. They're staging it. Joining us now to report on that disturbing story, he's in our West Coast Bureau tonight, our chief breaking news correspondent, Trace Gallagher. So they're literally staging weapons in a, that they're going to use that evening to throw the bricks at the cops, Trace? Is that how we interpret that? Because that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah, that's the belief shot. I mean, you have these piles of bricks and rocks showing up, as you said, near the various protest sites in cities like New York, Kansas City, Dallas, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And none of the sites are near construction areas, leading many to assume the bricks were planted by outside agitators specifically to stir up trouble. In fact, the New York Police Department says it has evidence that anarchist groups were pushing the protest toward violence and vandalism. Federal law enforcement officials say the violence points to far left groups like Antifa. Others say far right groups might also be involved. And many of the looters don't need to be supplied with bricks and rocks because they show up with their own tools in hand, well prepared to destroy property. Police in Minneapolis also found caches of stolen vehicles and incendiary devices in areas where numerous fires have broken out. And in Baltimore, there's evidence of double danger. Police have been sweeping the downtown area after, get this, finding both bricks and bottles with potential accelerants already inside them. But instead of being left out in the open piles, these potential weapons are kind of being hidden in small areas, though it's unclear if they are associated with the protests or groups on either side. So... Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> what? It's an X Files <laughs> shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that. The inc- that was Fox News. Um, this is the first I've heard of this. So, yeah, sorry. Here you go. Fox News isn't. Is a, people argue ag- about the source of Fox News quite often. I'm just trying to oh, get like, a lay of the yeah, land. Yeah, come on. Like we're just looking at the source. Like we're just looking at. Well, you know, but um, it, it's definitely been happening. They these. Uh, Incendiary. I didn't know about their incend- incendiary devices. Um, like, like I imagine maybe like uh, some type of petroleum or alcohol and and like a, a rag to make Molotov cocktails. I imagine that. Um, but so they think people suspect that there are these people called agent provocateurs. Have you heard of agent provocateurs before? You're not speaking my language, but I'm interested. A p- agent provocateur is a person who commits. Or who acts to entice another person to commit an illegal or rash act or falsely implicate them in partaking in a legal act so as to run, ruin the reputation or entice legal action against the target or group they belong to. An agent provocateur may be a member of a law enforcement agency acting out of their own sense of duty or under orders or under their own entity. They may target any group such as peaceful protest or demonstration in order to incite violence for the other group. So, what that would practically mean is people have found... People have found, for example, police officers who aren't in their uniform incite... This is what I've heard. Police officers who aren't in their uniform inciting violence, whether it be by spray painting things, by... by, um, causing actual violence and contributing to the riots uh, and people suspect that well when we when people look at these riots what do they think oh they think it's all black people doing this right and so what I'm seeing this is there's actual video footage of this of of white people um, in masks all dressed up graffitiing things like black lives matter right? Graffi- uh, graffiti, That's a whole nother issue. looting, well. yeah. breaking windows, just giving a reason to cause destruction. And whether that's because they represent themselves and they just want to cause chaos because they're taking advantage of a situation, or are their agent provocateurs hired by government agencies and or p- 
police departments, emergency responder departments, who are inciting violence on purpose so Mr. Trump and the government can bring in the National Guard and bring in the military and create some type of bring in new laws because that is what people do when there's chaos. They, they oh, we'll get work. Your, your amendment rights have been changed. This has been changed. We're bringing in this law to fix this. And martial law, is this a, is this, could this be a vehicle for them to create martial law and restore order? I don't know. Holy shit, we're, we're at the fucking Pentagon here, guys. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are balls deep into this conspiracy theory. It's like that Rick and Morty meme um, with Morty and he's like, uh, you, like, you son of a bitch, I mean, or something like that. Like, this is... From America, and like, the way you described it, because the martial law, when Donald Trump said that, I was like, well... Well, he, he didn't actually say martial sorry. law. That's how people interpret yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's... So, that's what... That's what I clarify. Saw. Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. No, that's cool. It's cool. <laughs> um... Who knows? Yeah, time's gonna tell, but I reckon I reckon we're we might be onto something here. Well, I don't know if you know, but they have curfews. Yeah. California definitely. has curfews. Yeah. I think it's like six PM till five AM. It's like can you can you imagine like I'm when I heard that I'm like, Man, we are lucky. <laughs> I don't have to worry about no curfews out here. Yeah. I can walk at fucking eight PM if I want to around here like not around here because I don't live around here, but um well, that's back to gratitude as well. Just like yes, it is. we we have got a lot of things, here. like, and then people are like, oh, the Australian government's fucking shit. Oh, it does this. It's like, well, you go live in fucking America at this time. You go put your put your fucking ass down there for a month, and then see how it is. Then we'll talk. Yeah, exactly. Like we're fine here, but yeah. See, there's there's peaceful stuff going on. Um. But people are taking advantage of... They're using this chaos. Mm. Just hearing this humming. <laughs> they're using this chaos as an excuse to cause violence. Like, people not even related to the... You know, you, you look at the, the footage of all this stuff that's happening and you realize that, well, human beings just take advantage of shit situations. And so... Damn, we're just looking at footage of people lying face down on the ground, all on a bridge, thousands of people. Um, and so, you know, this is what's beautiful. Yeah. Like, there's moments where, where African Americans and, and minority groups will be hand in hand, arm in arm with police officers, right? There that, are, that isn't always reported on the news, though. No, but there are, there are, there are many beautiful moments of solidarity that, that happen. And I think that, need, that we need to celebrate that more. And... Uh, it's a it's a beautiful thing when you see that um, but people want to take advantage Cuomo people want to take advantage of these situations and when they see chaos they're going to start looting and people who don't even necessarily even really care about the issue like if you're desperate and you're just going to join in the, on the chaos right and which is why people fucking putting bricks out is going to cause more shit. So who put the bricks there? I don't. Know. Is it is it art? <laughs> 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 well, they uh, someone knows Trump, so it, it's all it it all doesn't happen by chance in America. I'll say that. There's always a method Look at to the this. madness. The presidential motorcade is driving past, and just people are just screaming. You know what? What? Well, if what was Epstein? Was Epstein killed? Did he suicide himself? Bro, <laughs> have you started watching that Netflix documentary? No, but I probably got an hour. But he had a f Jesus! I did not realize he had like a a ring of like he ran a pyramid scheme oh. for for these <laughs> young underage girls. He was a f he, he was a dirty fuck, a dirty fucking pedophile. He would and he would um he would groom these girls as well, I think as well. I've, he I've, would the, yeah. the, the the girls who were especially especially desperate, 
they would yeah. he would play on their insecurities and the fact they needed money and a lot of them came from like troubled trauma background and he would he would kind of he would use them but he would do it in a, an intelligent manipulative way where he'd be like, oh if you can get another girl to come to me i'll give you 200 dollars." yeah so he he gave girls 200 dollars to massage him Massa- that's how it all started okay so they massaged him yeah. the girls walked in it's the same every time he was on his back naked but he was on his back so he couldn't see anything the girls like oh this is pretty weird but all right whatever they're all underage so their brain is barely formed so they barely can like uh comprehend and have the strength and resolve to to say no because they're still so young and so they go in he's on he's he's face down and for those who don't know jeffrey epstein he was a teacher he he he, um in a university who actually lied about never actually got a college degree he never actually got a college degree he manipulated and lied his way into it and when he got caught out he was able to be so kind of clever with his words they kept him on and the guy who kept him on and said it was it's one of my biggest kind of regrets of my life is that I I uh, let Jeff- Jeffrey Epstein keep his position. So Jeffrey Epstein then got into finance. He made a lot of people trusted him with his money. He made a gargantuan amount of money. He was one of the wealthiest, mysterious men in America, right? He owned an island. He, he, go, what were you say? Well, he took those said girls to that island and a certain royal family member who is not a royal family member who? anymore, who? Prince Andrew. Did Prince Andrew go? I s- <laughs> is Prince... Oh, I don't shit. Know. I didn't know that. This might be a real sort of rumor mill. I can't remember where I saw it, but I, I believe he's out of the royal family. Just... I don't even... I don't care. I don't really pay attention to the royal family, but just to hear some corruption in there, it like, doesn't surprise me, but... Oh. Um, well, yeah, there's probably shit, you know going down there as well the queen the queen and um prince philip the racist fuck like they're not gonna you know is he racist i don't know why is he racist oh he's just from what i've seen he's a bit of a you know well but he's also fucking 90 fucking thousand years old as well so (laughs) (laughs) so we're just trying to find the uncover the troubling connection to jeffrey epstein i'm doing a lot of unsourced sort of claims here i'm just saying shit just to say (laughs) Well, we're pulling Look, it up. Here it is. Uh, it's it's on townandcountymag.com. I'm sure pull that's it up, a young reputable. Jamie. Jesus Christ. Pull it up. <laughs> if anyone wants to a volunteer um, for uh, y- your position as my young Jamie, uh, just email youngjamie at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like... Oh. Do you want me to keep telling you about the... Yeah, sorry. The yeah. Situ- you should watch it, man. It's, I didn't expect to... Be pulled into it, but oh, I, I mean, oh, oh, they're reeling me like a fish, I'm coming in. dangling on the hook. <laughs> so he becomes this like billionaire guy, right? Kind of low key, goes to parties. He's like, he's always seen with like girls who are underage and like younger. He has a proclivity towards them. All right, cool. He likes young women, but he likes them super young. So like, okay, that's fucking weird. That's not that's not right. All right, let me keep telling the story. So he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of power and influence, okay? And when you mix those two, they come together, right? He knows a lot of powerful people. He knows Bill Clinton. Um, he's seen with guys like Trump. They were, they were friendly. Trump is actually quoted. Oh, Trump has this really weird quote about Jeffrey Epstein liking young girls and then um, Trump kind of agreeing with him. I'm like, here we go. He was Joe t- Biden acts like that as well. He's a he's he's a bit of a. Uh... <laughs> God, look how unhealthy even Trump looked back then. He just <laughs> looked bad. Just, but you know what? He's successful in his own way. So, um, I've known Jeffrey for 15 years. Donald Trump says he's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do. And many of them are on the younger side. He talks as he tweets. He, he tweets the same <laughs> fucking way. <laughs> this guy fucking well, at least he's consistent. Yeah. Like, he, the, the way Trump tweets, it's like, fucking... Uh, he just... Oh, anyways, back to this. Well, yeah. Well, he's definitely... And this is also how I was made aware of 
this sort of stuff as well is I believe through <laughs> Eddie Bravo on the Joe Rogan podcast, I believe he might have gone into this as well in terms of with this sort of stuff. And is Eddie the most reputable source? Probably not, but I like hearing my information from him because he says it's funny. Uh, he's he's probably got shit on, the, like, from what I've read, and I can't tell you my sources, <laughs> like, just literally on the internet, just looking around. You, know, you can't tell them because they're secret? Let's just say I've got people in high places. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no, anyway, it's like, oh, uh, oh, hello, Alex Jones, oh. I've pricked up now. I just, I just want to know his take on these things <laughs> um, because he's been so censored. There we go. Yeah. I'll find him. Ep- Don't you worry. Epstein was fucking running a pedophile ring. Okay, let, let's let's talk the about facts. The Clintons were in on it, and it's all uh, at all fuck. <laughs> it's all like a you know a big fucking whirlpool. He Epstein had shit on the Clintons because why else would Epstein be killed in a fucking jail cell? You think he had shit on the Clintons? And he had he had marks on his neck, I believe, um, asphyxiation or something like that, where he... he oh. that, it made it look like he was strangled, yeah, right? He was, yeah, it was... It wouldn't have been through um, him hanging himself. Like, there was some mark where he couldn't have been killed by someone's... Tr- like, it would have had to have been an object or something like that, where, like, yeah. Yeah, and so this... The mystery around... So, there's one story, they think he killed himself. The other story is he was killed and made to look like he killed himself. God damn it. We see that. Using, yes, we, you can see that I'm using ad blocker. Why would I want to see ads? Well, it's like when fucking um, Michael Jackson, that whole documentary came out and it was like, you know, did he touch these kids or was it, you know, those people sort of embellishing the story and or he didn't actually do it. What do you make of it? Uh... The first time I watched it, I... I haven't seen it. Yeah. Oh, I've only watched it once. Like, I I don't have enough... Like, I can't go by that documentary and say, he's a... <laughs> Can you see this? I said... Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt no, you. No, it's But it right. just, I just disabled my ad blocker so I could see the site. And we're looking at the screen, and half the screen is covered in ads. I cannot read the fucking article. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there, man. I have to click the X, the X. C O N spiracy. Conspiracy. That's what it is. They they do not want you to see this information. Jesus. Oh, here we go. Wait. wait. Alright. Oh god, look at this. Just horrendous. These, these fucks <laughs> do not want you to see this information. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about sorry, you want to talk about Jackson? Go. I don't know, just you don't even with Epstein, is it like with the Epstein sort of things as well, like him being with young girls, like these established, like, like as you're saying, like he was at the parties and stuff like that. Yeah. But with the Jackson thing as well, like I've seen that documentary and I can't tell, for, I can't say for certain that Jackson, Michael Jackson, was, a, you know, molested these two young boys. Yeah. Because these two young boys, or so these guys now, they might have just wanted money or they might just wanted cash. So they're like, the framing or like framing him as like a molester it's yeah i don't know it's just is there evidence what evidence is there well that's a thing i don't know yeah i, I don't I, like i don't know either like, i've seen seen a bit of that but i haven't seen like any sort of hard sort of evidence okay. as because the, the man well the man's dead now like fuck we can't we have to deal with one sex criminal at a time <laughs> it's hard enough dealing with one let alone so let's go well if we're in hollywood that's going to be a lot oh, jesus <laughs> yes be careful out there. And we haven't even touched on Harvey Weinstein. So that'd, oh. be, that'd be enough. <laughs> Did Jeffrey Epstein... I know I saw a picture with Jeffrey and Harvey Weinstein. They're all connected, man. I reckon, I reckon it's... Where... There's a web. Fuck. There's, there's a quote for it and I've just forgotten the quote. Oh, I've forgotten it. Uh, you remember? Tell uh, me. Yeah. So, we're fast forwarding. But in the end, Jeffrey Epstein died, right? And then... They did a kind of a, uh, assessment and analysis of what actually happened. Um, his death prompted widespread conspiracy theories. After speculation, he had been murdered. Photos taken inside his cell show several noose fashioned from the bed sheets dumped on the floor, piles, and electrical cords. Images from his autopsy reveal his bloody neck as well as his broken neck bone. A handwritten note was also found in his cell in which he complained about 
prison conditions, including how a guard locked him in the shower stall for an hour. So, here is him. Why is there so many? Can you? Can someone explain why there are so many orange jumpsuits in his cell? Oh well, yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's yeah, a bizarre yeah, to me. That's hundred percent. Multiple nooses fashioned from the orange bedding were found on the floor. Photos inside his cell re- revealed fragments of material were found hanging from a window, with a large strip of bedding was also looped through a hole. So. He's created a noose and he's created an anchor point. Here is his neck. Uh, revealed for the first time. Um, look, I know I, I no way I can interpret the wounds on his neck here, whether it's strangulation versus. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I we're, we're, not, we're not forensic. Jesus, you oh know. God, that, that's, that, that's his actual body. Oh, shit. Okay. How fucked is this the fact that they're just showing it? Like, I on didn't realize. It's just, yeah. But you can see how lifeless a human body looks. Like, oh my God. It just you look it's look it's like your soul has been taken from you. You look like a ghost. It's like the Dementors in um Harry Potter. Yeah. Like it's it's that sort of just lifeless body just yeah. So the hyoid bone which is along the middle of the neck near Adam's apple was broken. Okay. It was uh his neck had been broken in several places, including the hyoid bone. Um, forensic experts have previously said that breakages to that specific bone could occur when people hang themselves but when more commonly seen in victims who had been strangled I have never seen three fractures like th- this in a suicidal yeah, hanging Dr. Baden told 60 Minutes going over a thousand jail hanging suicides in New York State state prisons for over the past 40 to 50 years no one had three fractures isn't it nuts as well that Rogan on his podcast was literally saying about how Epstein was killed. Epstein was, um, the fact that like, no, first of all, no one came for Rogan, which I think. <laughs> when like, he said what? Well, he was saying about how Epstein didn't kill himself. So he's like saying this repeatedly on his podcast as well. And it was like, yeah, I just, I, I found it very interesting. Like the fact that like, there is a lot of shit that we don't know about that's going on. Oh, yeah. And, you know, yeah, it's 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 honestly mind-blowing, like, the fact some of this shit. Like, but these documentaries and, and, and the, this anarchy and chaos in the world, there's, like, this layer of... It, it's like a... How do I say? It's like most people have rose-colored glasses on, right? It's like they see the world for what they want instead of what it really is, okay? And so they have... It's like they got their blue blocker glasses on. Everything's, you can't see all the blue light, right? Everything's a bit better. It's a bit lower light, right? But then you take them off and then you see everything's so bright and you see it for really what it is and the layers and veneer of society starts revealing itself through these events, through these, through pandemics, through riots, through death, through life. And you're just like, wow. We're just talking chimps. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyways um back to our ads uh, uh yes if you like the we're... news and showbiz you'll love news it that's <laughs> dr that, baden sorry go that ahead. could have gone into an ad read right <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. so look i don't know the veracity of dr baden's statement but let's just take it for what it is the man's seen so many fucking killings if like, that's true that's a fucking lot of hangings man how many people hang themselves in and jail? how and how fucking mentally as well like the for example being like a forensic forensic officer or someone who has to deal with like being at a morgue yeah like that would that scares the fucking bejesus out of me like seeing like it's just life like obviously but still weirds the fuck at it weirds the fuck out of me seeing like dead people and just like like you saw then it was just a lifeless body its soul is just taken from it mm. and like that just fucking freaks me out and i get the heebie-jeebies every time i fucking fair enough it, man. it always does like i just that's normal it, I'd, be, yeah, probably, I'd be yeah i'd be a little creeped out if it didn't happen <laughs> silence of the lambs sort you know, of uh if you've just been shoveling dead bodies every weekend without us knowing hannibal lecter sort of stuff <laughs> there's people like that people you don't people <laughs> damn you did that too well 
Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Let's not talk about my weekend habits. <laughs> so, forty to fifty years, never seen the hanging like this. Doctor Baden said the injuries on his body also showed contusions on both wrists, muscle hemorrhaging in his left shoulder. And an abrasion on his left arm. Epstein also had a cut in his lip. It burst capillaries on his face, mouth, and eyes. <sighs> yeah, this man did not kill himself. So, the question is, why did they do it now? He had so much time to speak. How much time was he in jail for? I don't know. Why did they do it now? I don't think he was in jail. For long? For long. I know they got to him quick, huh? Damn. So why did why did they do it now? He's he's got shit on someone. He ha- like he has to have shit on someone. Yeah, of course. Like of they've course. got the Clintons. The Clintons are coming in, and they're just like coming in hot. <laughs> you're coming in hot, putting the kibosh on that fucking bullshit. They've had enough. They just. Can you imagine if Hillary was involved? I bet. She will. Oh, I reckon she's. She's. She can't not be. She she's in too deep. She was nearly the president, man. <laughs> what if Trump was? <sighs> Could that take him down? Could that be the thing? What if, Trump? If he was involved in this in this in this Epstein sex <sighs> trafficking thing? I reckon he'd still be president. I reckon the Americans are too far gone. <laughs> They're just like like this is the thing. Oh, so you've got God. you've got shit. As much as people want to shit on Australian politics, Jesus Christ, we're not like though like Ameri- like I love hey, I love America. Hey America, you all right. You but- are right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Eminem says in um one America, hey America, you're cool, I'm just playing. Anyway, it's like we are le- like we've had, you know, people sort of come and go of the Australian Prime Ministers. We've had like what, four or five in six years. But we're not like them where we've got, you know, a president's an ex-president's wife who's not the best and she covered up a lot of shit. And then there's Trump who is a reality show host pretty much. Is like a wealthy as fuck man. But Strange times. It is. Strange times are coming knocking and that's what they're doing. So, yeah. I, I'm i stunned by the last half an hour. We've just, we've just gone in. We have gone in, man. It's a, it's a strange world, but, you know, it's important, I think... To me, it's better to be aware than ignorant, but as long as you can handle it, if you have the tools to handle the, the chaos and the stress and the weirdness. If you don't, then maybe ignorance is, is bliss f- for now. And I think you made a good point um, in terms of talking, to, like especially, well, this is just a random point as well, in terms of with kids. You were talking with George about it yesterday. It's like we talk to kids sometimes as idiots and we'll talk. Yeah down to them and go like we'll try and over explain fucking everything like some people some kids even are fucking 10 years old they know a lot more shit than we think they do so it's like if you just talk to people normally with the ignorance is bliss i think it's good now i i used to be like that where it was just like you'd always see the good in people and like oh this person can't do this like this shit can't happen around here you know everyone's nice to each other everyone's good to each other Motherfuckers, everyone's going to cut you. It, things, there is shit going down in a lot of places. And we're at the surface, but what's underneath the surface, you don't want to know. What's underneath? <laughs> is Jeffrey Epstein underneath and still alive? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Is that his real body? <laughs> I was going to go around, um, and it reminds me of a show um, on the ABC it used uh. to be on the ABC called Round the Twist. Yes. And that I've was I've been like, to that lighthouse. Have you? It's a nice lighthouse. That's a good theme song as well. Anyway, it's like, yeah, that um there's all I don't know why I said <laughs> I don't know why I said Where are you going with the <laughs> Round the Twist? <laughs> I, was, I just I just want to put that Jerry Borzillo, run this podcast for me for two minutes. I'll be back. Alright, you just where are you going? I'm just gonna get my food. Alright. You can run the podcast, you can chat, talk chimps. <sighs> Gee, uh, okay, this is gonna be a solo sort of podcast here. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Jeremy here, just chilling. What's crack a lacking? I wish I had. I wish we had a live feed going so I could just you know chat. Um, so yeah, we're at the. Uh, you know, it's good to be on the Talking Chimps podcast again. 
and I reckon I've probably been on. <laughs> we'll see how I go after this time. I don't know. Alex might not have me back. <laughs> uh, just for some shit bants. Uh, what's going on? I wanna. I'm wearing um a powerhouse gym top. Shout out to my friend Matt Riley, aka at Max Potential Fitness. And yes, yeah, so he's top. Uh, his gym top. Um, shout out to all the guys. Quarantine. Gonna give it to your group chat. Shout out to those guys. Shout out to my friends, mum, dad, everyone. Uh, yeah. How's ever put in the comments? How's everyone doing? Um in this quarantine period what's been happening with everyone how's everyone coping emotionally mentally um physically how's everyone's how's everyone feeling during this time we're at the um we're at the halfway about the halfway mark of the podcast or you know three quarters in and you know we'll just uh put some ads in you know we just got to get some sponsors so uh shout out to diet right so diet right is uh uh I'm just bringing some cordial are here. Are they paying for this? <laughs> I'm doing some ads. <laughs> I've got to fill some time. Oh, what are you eating? Oh, oh, what are you eating there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to uh, do this. No, it's okay. I never usually eat, but, well, I do eat. <laughs> but I am time poor today. And if I don't do it now, it's okay. I got to train later. Well, do you want to, we'll go, go for another, what, half an hour? We'll just keep on going or... Oh, we're going to keep on going. Are you okay? Yeah. Yes, I'm okay. Am I am I doing well on this podcast? You tell me. What were you just... Diet right. So what are you diet, drinking? Diet right. I'm drinking some um, cordial. Why? Uh, so pretty much sugar-free sort of cordial just because I don't like drinking water. Two liters of water. I don't... Oh, boo-hoo. You don't like drinking water? Good. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, on that on a separate point, I've um been watching a lot more sort of Jocko, Will and Nick and his sort of podcast as well. And I think... Him and Goggins, especially their sort of thought philosophies as well and the way they're sort of thinking as well. I'm only a recent sort of fan with Jocko Willinick, but a lot of shit is above your shoulders. Mm. A lot of stuff, you can always push a little bit more. You can always do a little bit more. It's that your mind always goes. And for me, my mind always always go. But now it's like, even in my training, even in anything, it's like you can always push out a little bit more, always go a little bit extra. Um, yeah, so shout out Jocko Willinick. And I've got it... Um, get to his book as well gotta read that um yeah. in those moments those are the hardest moments when when you when you're faced with stopping quitting saying i'm done what do you tell yourself in those moments before you keep pushing i don't know you just you think about this is all going to be over like there's always an end point to everything mm -hmm. so the pain I feel now is not in comparison to the pleasure or, you know, relief I feel later. So I'm going to feel good later, get the work done now. And I, I, look, as a white 25-year-old Caucasian male, I haven't experienced too much heartache and or shit. And I found, I find your points very interesting how like you, you dive head first, you go straight in and you're like, I sometimes like... I think you're in awe as well, but also like it's a bit of, you sort of look at people who have gone through shit and you're like, you wish you could go through that sort of, you know, stuff as well. And there's a sick sort of envy. Mm -hmm. And you're like, how in the fuck is this, you know, this person's come back from this and yet they're coming back even harder. Like I want to sort of be like that in terms of um, uh, mentally and that sort of um, thought as well, which I think is especially with that man, like there are people that have come from broken homes. There are people that have, you know, had all this and they're like, they're still pushing forward and people, there are people not the, like the pandemic's a whole different, you know, kettle of fish, but people are like, Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Or, you know, I can't improve upon this, you know, quality is going to make me a better human. It's like, just suck it up and fucking do the work, which is what we we're talking about in another podcast as well. But it's like, yeah, you can always do more than you think. And one of the point, one of the things that I want to do is I want to try and seek discomfort. Yes. So as a result, I was talking to, and this has been a chat with two of my best mates, um, Matt and Anthony, and we'll chat about possibly doing the Kokoda Trail. Now, this is all pie in the sky. We're just chatting. But that would be something 
or like something just something hard like that or just you know i could do like say a half marathon or a 10k run whatever like that's that's not hard in that sense but that's something that i want to sort of seek i want to seek discomfort i want to go straight in and go i'm fucking coming for you that's a great idea yeah uh, let's do something yeah i'm gonna join you uh, uh, all right yeah let's like, decide on something are we actually gonna okay cool i think there's something here you're 100% right because they get to a point where you don't just talk the talk you gotta walk the walk I have, I reckon I gotta walk the walk I think as a person uh, which is not a bad thing that I haven't experienced that because obviously I've come from a loving family but yeah it's gonna fuck up my plans a bit with the other <laughs> other goals I have with, no, with strong hey, men and we can still talk like we can say shit now but we don't have to decide on something that's correct we don't have to, yeah okay we can just chat a bit like what would be something you would sort of work towards Hmm. You said half marathon. You said marathon. Maybe said, not. Maybe not a marathon. <laughs> you said okay. <laughs> marathon might be a bit. Maybe because you <laughs> react like that is exactly why why it should be done. Oh shit! <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> you said Kokoda Trail, which fuck, you don't want to do a marathon. That Kokoda Trail is days. That yeah, that's <laughs> fucking days of just discomfort. But that would be something that, as me as you know, a person in Australia. I think it's good just in terms of the war history there as well, but also just do hard shit. That would be something I would consider. What would you What would you think? Like, what would be something? Hmm. I think. You know, there are difficult things to do, like a martial art, committing to that, making that a consistent part of my routine is definitely something I want to do again, specifically jujitsu. But... It sounds like we're talking more on the line... Would that be a relevant thing or are we talking more on the lines of an event that you work up to to achieve? I'd probably say an event. Like, I think with the jiu-jitsu sort of stuff, like, I'd have to shuffle a few things around in terms of... No, yeah, of course. Training, personal, whatever. Because you have powerlifting goals right now. Powerlifting-ish sort of goal. Like, I'm more on the aerobic. I'm going to... Instead of five days a week training, I'm going to go to four days a week of powerlifting sort of work and then just go a bit more aerobic. Yep. Because you can still gain aerobic quality four to six weeks around there. Yeah. I think... An event, definitely, though. I think, well, okay, let's talk about the underlying foundation. Is definitely, like, yeah, I do envy people who have gone through significant heartache because my masochist mind realises that yeah. they, if they can make it out, they become far... I don't want to say superior human beings, but they become extremely strong, resilient human beings. Yeah. And so if you can't have, you know, I've had a lot of my own issues and troubles with, with through, I'm sure I'll talk about one day, um, but it's usually not as related to me, but more related to the people around me. And so it's not directly my heartache. I'm not Todd Jarrodding. I've got ulcerative colitis and I'm knocking on death's door. Yeah. You know? That was rough watching what watching him in terms of um see the podcast here was oh, fucking awesome like i haven't given you props for that like, that was a quality fucking podcast and yeah. he spoke really well with his troubles but what he's going through again puts everything in perspective as well like and i i found it fucking nuts the fact that he's like on instagram he's showing him himself going through all these troubles and if you want to talk about a fucking transparent motherfucker, that's a transparent motherfucker. But for me, looking at that, I'm just like, why the fuck is he sharing this? Like, I don't... I know, I know why he's sharing it, but I don't know why in terms of like, why wouldn't he just, you know, not show people the heartache days? Like, I remember, I think it was a couple of days ago, him walking four kilometers mm -hmm. and he was fucked. And... Yeah, it, your heart, my heart does go out to him, and I, you know, I wish him the first of all that he can get over the shit that he's going through, but also, you know, like, yeah, it's just it's just heartbreaking to see that sort of stuff, and we're all should be grateful, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every person throughout their life will be. There will be a challenge 
that will be thrust upon them. A boss in like in a video game, like I talked about with my Ethan Wilson. Ethan Wilson. And it's it, you got just got to I got to constantly remind myself that every challenge is like a boss in a video game that you got to beat. It's something to overcome. You're either gonna pick up your sword and fight and slay that dragon, or you're gonna give up. It's a decision. What are you gonna do? And so Todd has one of the hardest bosses to fight. And we all have our own boss to fight, and that's ourselves. That's often ourselves, but sometimes our bodies and minds break down, especially in his case. Um, if you want to know context, you guys can go to Coach Todd. Was it Coach? Uh, Coach Jared, I believe. Coach Jared on yeah. Instagram, you'll see some of that. And, you know, I think that's the benefit of sharing it is that it's not just you're putting out your best times, your PBs. You're putting out... Yeah, and we're talking about that. The weaknesses. Yeah. The times of heartache. So people can relate to it. You can document it and you can look back on it one day and, wow, I came out of this. You can use it as a vehicle for help to get some support, some virtual support. Because you never know how many other people are going through that, something like that. And so if, if you don't have the opportunity to be thrust upon something that is so difficult like that, then you have to create consistent voluntary adversity like we do and like you're, you and we are, are trying to like think about creating yeah. us. So what would we do? Um, I'd love to join you in on this. Even with, I mean, if you guys are going to do Kokoda, or t- let's just, what is that? What does that look like? How many Ks is that? How many days is that? Do you know? I know it's nine days. I don't know how many... I can't remember how many Ks off the top of my head, but it's... Nine days of walking, camping every night. You take a guide. It's an 11-day, fully guided, supported. Well, okay. You might be able to do it quicker. I just This is just the one I saw. Um, So, this is in... So, give some context around it. So, it's, it's, uh, it's in Papua New Guinea? Yeah. And it's along the track, the trek. Sorry that the um, Anzacs <coughs> did as well, pretty much. And I remember we were just, yeah, and my mates and I were just talking about it because it's it's a good sort of goal to work towards, and it's a good feeling of achievement, and the fact that you know you work hard towards a goal, and when you complete it, it's pure sort of elation. And that's something, I don't know, I feel like I'm missing in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, aren't you working towards goals with your power lifting or your uh, own personal development? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, that's... Do you feel like that... Go ahead. That's still hard. Like, it's, it's still a goal I need to work, like, definitely want to work towards. But I think it's more altruistic sort of stuff as well. And it's like, if I can at least even... You know, for clients that have got, or even like friends, if you can show people that you can do shit, and it doesn't have to be Kokoda, like it could be fucking, you know, a run, or it could be whatever it is. Like, I don't know. I just, I think it helps. You get in your reps, mind wise, and you get in like mental reps where you just every single time you can achieve higher and higher goals and higher higher achievements. It's like you tick one off the list, and you just, yeah, you you just become a better human. You upgrade. Mm. You get your power pack. You, the the vast amount of video game experience I've had, which is not a lot. Um, yeah, you just level up on shit. So. And every time you do something like that, you build more trust in yourself. You build more integrity. That you can set your mind to something, work at it, and achieve it. But it's often... The working at it, the process, which is, at least for me, the, the thing I relish the most. I mean, you talked about the outcome being something you relish, which is absolutely fine. Everyone's different. But the process of getting better. So, Kokoda is a big one. That might, yeah. It's not... If you if you guys get closer to deciding that... Yeah. I probably have to chat to them again about it. But you let me know. Yeah. But can you swim? Yeah. I can't swim well. I'm can decent. Oh, yeah. Of course you can. You're a swim teacher. All right. 
What's something we both suck at? Well, jiu-jitsu would be one. A martial art, yeah. I reckon you'd probably be better than me. I've, I've literally done no martial art training. I'll have to have a think. Yeah. A real, like, sober October sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, but just for, like, a challenge yeah. that you have to set yourself to and hold each other accountable. And I'd love to get more people involved. Where I reckon it'd probably work towards would probably be, like, a run. I reckon that'd probably be where us two... That's a good start. Yeah, that'd be a good day. Good like How long? Hmm. Well I've been The most I've ran This period has been 6k 6k 30 minutes You saw it yeah. there Keep telling me about that How are you going with that? Oh so Why, why I was doing that Is what because pace is that? That's a good pace uh, 5 minute pace Per kilometre And pretty That's much decent Yeah It's a, like I was following um The stuff that Strength Culture uh, Jamie Butiotis From Strength Culture Who's more their Strength conditioning Sort of coach Um he put out a program where it was a running program where it was, you know, three day a week run, so it'll be tempo runs and then a more interval run and then just like a walk. So this this is over three days. So you do one day tempo runs, yeah, one day interval training stuff. So it did you work through the six weeks, so it'd be thirty seconds on, thirty seconds off for week one, and then you go to week six where it'd be you'd be run run straight for thirty minutes. And I've been doing that since then so about for about five weeks. Every single week, run 30 minutes, like just as a test and just see how I'm going. And so week one, I was running 5K and now I'm running 6K over like that period. So, yeah. Uh, but it's also because I'm getting fit. It's like aerobically, I'm a lot, I'm picking the low-hanging fruit. I'm picking, you know, going for a lot more walks, you know, doing a lot more incidental activity, doing a bit more aerobic work in there as well. Um, and then like other stuff like sprints and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. How's your... How's your body composition and um, how's all that going? Yeah, it's going well. Because like, that's going to help, obviously. Yeah. I, again, about 80 at the moment. I can't remember what. I haven't weighed myself a couple of days, but. Sheesh. Yeah. So, we'll see how it goes. How are you, how you feeling about that? Uh, I feel good. I feel uh, rejuvenated. I just feel better. And the reason why... I feel better is because like a lot of the guys that I coach are younger, you know, people. <laughs> Not that I'm old, but it's just there's younger kids who, uh, for example, you know, Lock Kennett, Eve, uh, Dean, Jackson Edwards used to, you know, I was coming here as well, but he's like that's a a wonderful man as well who fucking you know works hard. He's pretty much like yourself in terms of he's more about his you know, personal development and all that sort of stuff uh yeah i used to coach um guys like mick russell as well he's like he's one of my friends well through there as well but all these guys are quality athletes and it's like well if i want to talk the talk and if i'm telling them to do something like you better hope that i have done it otherwise i'm just you don't need and you don't need to be like you know ripped shredded but it's like you have to show you like you have to have at least have some inkling because as much as we say it's not about how you look it is a little bit how you look as well because that's the first thing they're going to see so they're going to look at you and be like well uh, yeah it's going to be like you're either going to be trainable or not trainable i guess or i want to have you as a coach or not as a coach or yeah so th- i just want to try and beat the young guys pretty much what i'm saying <laughs> you want to beat them on it yeah on on a you know on the athletically better than them i guess which I'm not, but <laughs> it's a goal. You're getting there. Yeah. In some ways, you are strength-wise. Yeah. Straight, yeah, but strength-wise, it's fucking sa- sagittal monster like myself <laughs> coming in. Uh, I'm getting around the frontal. Frontal plane's getting a look in. Transver- Absolutely. Transverse is getting a look in. Absolutely. Sagittal still. Yeah. <laughs> sagittal, sa- uh, sagittal plane beast. Sagittal plane monster. <laughs> Um, sagittal plane for those who don't know it's um it's a plane of movement uh, think front and back just moving front and back yeah. walking running deadlifting squatting it's all kind of up uh, it's called front back type of movement so we're trying to want to be multi planner you want to be able to be what's what's a real life movement it's multi planner yeah. it's through transverse it's through um coronal aka okay, frontal so turning yourself into a frontal plane beast and, <laughs> and a transverse plane beast anyway um I think that's great man because yeah. 
You want to embody someone that's as excellent, someone that, you know, you no, know, you don't need to be, no, we don't need to be fucking six pack, tw- 365 days a year, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, though you might have those goals and I know, you know, I'm trying to challenge myself right now with new nutritional implementation strategies and science that I've learned and trying to get to those levels. Let me test the physical capabilities of my body. Let me see what I can do. And going through that process is difficult, but it's, you learn a lot. Like you've, I'm sure you've learned a lot about how your body responds differently to different interventions, different foods, different ratios of, of macronutrients. Excuse me. But when those kids look at you now, they're going to look up to you even more because they would have seen that you can transform yourself and change yourself into a better version a better human being a better functioning healthier human being and so that's worth a lot that's worth a lot it's worth a lot to yourself that's worth a lot to the people you work with we owe it to the people that look up to us through the service that we give them we owe it to be in the best shape possible we don't have to be world record olympic or like world class but we owe it to them to, if we care about being great, if we care about providing an excellent surface, we owe it to ourselves to be excellent ourselves. I believe that. Mm. That is what I believe. Well, what about yourself, like nutrition-wise? So I know you've been taking a lot more carbs recently as well. Like, how have you found that? Have Like, have you been enjoying having a bit more carbs? Not like Because I know obviously you come from like a more high-protein fat sort of stuff like yeah i've experimented with that stuff um have you found that so well there's two answers the high carb was more when i was uh in a surplus when i was for the last phase i was focusing on uh gaining as much muscle mass as possible for the phase i was in got up to about 83 kilos cool that's the biggest and heaviest i've ever been but i'm not satisfied so right now i my ratios of because there's this idea that I used to believe this idea, this used pervasive idea that like, oh, carbs are bad. Carbs mean you get fat. Carbs mean you can't be lean. Don't eat carbs after six. Right. <laughs> carbs mean you can't be 10% body fat or less. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on. As I was learning more and more and more and studying more and experiencing more. And then I saw people, experts, um, coaches in the field that still ate a lot of carbs and yet looked the way they did, really lean and looked great. So I'm like, okay, it can be done. So how can I do it in a way that is sustainable and healthy? And what you find is that, well, if I source my carbs from mostly high quality grains and plants, tubers, yams, so like, I rotate my potatoes, I'll go sweet potatoes, I'll go, I'll go like a, a Dutch cream potato, I'll go a red potato, um, I keep seasonal food variety, you know, if you're intelligent about the way you implement it, so putting the higher carb post-workout because you're more insulin sensitive after it, so your body will be able to more efficiently partition away that fuel post-workout. Another example, you're more insulin sensitive and you, you, our bodies will metabolically respond more favorably to having that higher carb meal in the morning versus the night, okay? There's, there, uh, there's a link between our circadian rhythm, so our sleep-wake cycle, and our endocrine system and our metabolic health. So if you give, there's a, there's, I could pull up the study, Rhonda Patrick talked about it, it was, it's a great study that if you compare the exact same meal, morning afternoon and night the postprandial which means post meal uh, metabolic response is as least it's it's as most favorable in the morning and least favorable at night so you can think oh. about that and you can be like okay people think oh it doesn't matter when you eat it just matters what you eat well it's a hierarchy the quality of the food you eat and what you eat and the quantities are probably at the at the at the top of the hierarchy as one of the most important things, right? But 
Let's see, we can't neglect timing. You can't also neglect how you eat. I'm not eating in the best way right now because I'm talking. I'm not probably chewing the food as much as I as I should be because I'm in the middle of having a conversation. Talking with a fellow chimp, yes. You know, you know how it is. <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, I'm going to pull it up. That's interesting you say about how, because for a long time, uh, even things like carb backloading where you'd have a lot of your carbs yeah. um, during you know the night period or times when you wouldn't be training or anything like that. So you'd, you'd focus a lot of your carbs not around training but around like after training so you'd have like a lower sort of carb before training and then mm-hmm. after training just you go a ton of fucking yeah carbs. that's 10 to what i that's 10 to what i do okay yeah, yeah. We, I, i've well i've done that and i found it effective as well mm-hmm. like just i i don't see the point of having it unless you got to you got to make up a ton of carbs like you having a ton of carbs before training might not be the best sort of strategy as opposed to having it after because you'll still have the glycogen in your system as well. It's not like it's going to go away anytime soon. So, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I Just preference, I just like having it after. Yeah, And that works. Uh, that can work. Um, I am doing a bit of a different strategy now where I'm having still carbs before my workout and um, that's not going to be the best for my metabolic health but I'm just trying to make some experimentation with my body composition and... If we just look at, I know it's not the only, the most important, I know it's not the only thing that you need to consider, but if we just look at energy in, energy out, um, thermodynamics, thermodynamics, yeah, yeah. Uh, then, I mean, Lane Norton talks about it a lot. When you're in a deficit, I'm going to paraphrase some of the stuff and research he's, he's surmised, is that the ratios of carbs to fat and fat to carbs, so whether it's high fat, high carb, or uh, high, low low fat, high carb, when you're in a deficit, is negligible. So there's, we're talking about there's small differences. In fact, I won't yeah I won't go any further than that without looking at the actual research. Yeah. Um, but the protein seems to be the the one of the single most important factors, one of the most sensitive um, macronutrients to muscle protein synthesis and mitigating muscle degradation. So if we're in a deficit now, I'm making sure I'm hitting two and a half to three times per gram kilo of body weight, right? I talked about earlier in the podcast. Now that's a lot, but I want, it's, it's a, you remember what a confidence interval is? No, explain it to me again, sorry. So there's, there's confidence intervals, there's these ranges um, that you find in studies that like, it's not a black and white. Oh, like one standard deviation, is, is that what you're talking about or? Uh, I'm not talking about like a bell curve. I'm talking about like, you might say, Maybe it's here. No, it's not here. You might say that um, we found that a maximal muscle protein synthesis was found between 2.2 and 2.8 grams per kilo of body weight um, within this range. And that means within that range, they are 95% sure the data within that range is accurate. So there may be outliers outside of it, but they are 95% sure that that range is 95% accurate um, to that data point. So, if we bring it back to this, if you can see on the screen there, uh, identical meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's the glucose response to the meal. And you can see that the glucose response, although it doesn't look like it was significantly higher, right? We're talking about six, seven, eight millimolars per liter. So, this person had a meal at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m., the highest glucose response was at the night to the same identical meal. I'm going to read what I wrote. This is obviously very important for people with pre-diabetes or diabetes, but it is also very important for the general population who want to stave off these conditions and want to maintain brain function because we know metabolic health is tied into cognitive function and potentially even Alzheimer's. One study found an association of even high fasting plasma glucose levels within the normal range were associated with brain volume losses in the hippocampus and amygdala, regions of the brain involved in memory, learning, and cognition. So, so this was they did their tested their fasting glucose levels, and they found it was within the normal range, so uh, less than 100 milligrams per deciliter or less than 5.6 millimolars per liter, 
and they still found there was an association with brain losses in the hippocampus and, and cognitive function. And that just goes to show you that these ranges that they give us in ho- in, 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 uh, through hospitals and through uh, doctors, normal doesn't mean ideal. Normal doesn't mean healthy and normal doesn't mean optimal. Yeah. So... If you care about your metabolic health, I wouldn't be eating carbs right now. I would keep them all for post-workout. But I also want to, I think, challenge myself in the way that, hold on, can you have a healthy relationship with food, still enjoy, you know, carbohydrates tend to be quite, uh, they give a lot of, like, mouth pleasure. Like, they're, 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 not, they're tasty, generally, you know. I, I like potato. I like, you know, like, I'm all, I'm all over brown rice right now. Oh. Right? all over brown rice it tastes right. better it's got more protein per 100 grams and it has much more it's much more nutrient dense with b vitamins thiamine compared yeah. to white polished rice i didn't know this so I, I like basmati and or jasmine okay but i i know brown rice has more protein but i'm still like i just like basmati just and or jasmine just because of the taste like just it tastes like soft in your mouth and it tastes nice so mm-hmm. i was like yeah Potato, potato, I guess. No, not potato, potato. Because, oh, well, because... Well, in terms of taste, not in terms of, like, other sort of health markers, it's like, all right, well, there's tons of other shit, like, we can consider. But, yeah, in terms of taste, it's like... Choose, like, first of all, if you're not going to have something, like... Sometimes people might just have food, but they don't see it as, like, an enjoyable experience. It's just, like, my, like I'm just... I remember a couple of bodybuilders, like, I remember Jay Cutler... Um, a, a famous bodybuilder he used to have like just have like chicken and rice or whatever it was and he'd just have it he'd just shovel it in like five six times a day he wouldn't enjoy it he'd just have it because it was just like fuel it was just it was like, a means like, to an end means to an end just get big just fucking eat mm-hmm. yeah, um, that's pretty much yeah and that's how some people are that's yeah. not how sometimes when you need to eat a lot of food it becomes like that when you need yeah. to eat 4,000 well, plus calories when it's a job when Brian Shaw's got to eat 10,000 calories <laughs> like he's, he's not going okay well I'm gonna you know I'm going to eat some stuff that I find enjoyable. I'm just going to eat shit just to get it in. Like, similar to like all the strong men, similar to like people like Powerton as well. Some guys eat six, 7,000 calories. Like, you just got to get shit in. Like, it's not it's not an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Yeah. Same one time. But that's the thing. You can't always enjoy that shit. You can't always enjoy, you know, the process. The process isn't always enjoyable, right? You just got to... If you have big goals and outcomes that you want to achieve... You have to take action in spite of how you feel and in spite of whether you enjoy it or not. If it matters to you. If you truly have a purpose and a why to why you're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. What does your nutrition look like now? So, tell me like first, second, third, fourth meal of the day. I don't really have like a set in terms of diet. I'm not like going, okay, I'm going to eat this. Like I'll just see how the day is going and I probably should in terms of like, all right, well, I'm going to have this now, this now, this now. I haven't put that much thought as opposed to what you've done in terms of like your diet and stuff. So I'm on 180 grams of protein. You measure it? Um, so I've got uh, Charlie who puts my diet and he goes, okay, well, on five days a week, I'm having 180 grams of, grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, 55 fat, which is about 2,015 calories. And then two days I'll have on the oh, week. Oh, are you in, so you, wait, you're only taking in 2K. 2,000 calories. But then I'll eat 2,300 on the weekends. So then it bounces out to 2,100 calories for the whole week. Got it. So I can get, during the week, I'm fine. I can like have less calories. But during the weekend, I might, you know, have a, like a meal with, with family or just might do some other stuff. So it's like I have a little bit of wiggle room in that regard. So like I can have a, like 300 calories more. But it's also like I've been doing fine off of it. So I yeah. think that, that, that sounds like quite a deficit for you. How long have you been on that for? About three weeks, but it was from, but it started at like 23, 2400 anyway. Ah, so, so you've been yeah. titrating down. Yeah. It Got didn't it. start, yeah, it didn't start 2000. So they've been really good. And um, in terms of like my training, Charles has been really good as well. So he's like been assessing it. And it's like I've still been dropping weight steadily. So he still kept me on those macros because like, why are you going to change it? Like, unless like, if I'm still losing weight, I'm not stalling. Yeah, it's working. It's working. So yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. Um, are you, so you measure your body weight? Yeah. Um, so measure it 
I've measured in the past couple of days, but pretty much daily I've tried to measure it. Yeah. So it's been a steady sort of decline, which has been good. For how long? For at least a month. No, sorry, two months. Fucking the whole quarantine. Like, well, even before that, but like the whole quarantine, I've been doing that sort of stuff. Man, where that's awesome. It's been a period of leaning out, yeah. So I don't know what will come of after quarantine. I might just, you know, I'm still going to, might just still stay lean and just maybe eat a bit more calories or I don't know. That's probably. Yeah, you could, uh, what we call reverse diet back up. Yeah. Have you heard of that? The, uh, Dave O'Brien was talking about that. He's oh, like, I'm familiar with the concept as well, mm-hmm. but I think for me, it would have to be a slow sort of period because I like... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and I like, I don't think me going through, that's like, say, 2,800 calories and all that again, it's going to, yeah, it's just going to cause me to maybe overeat a bit more as yeah. well. Whereas if I'm on, like, say, 2,200, still, it's a lot more, it's like 200 more calories, so I'm still having a bit more food, but I'm still in a sneaky deficit, then we'll start to... Yeah. Well, that's the thing because these ranges of like being like understanding um, body composition and I'm going to keep fucking it up. Thermo, thermogenics, genics is heat. Thermogenics or thermodynamics? Which one is it? When we talk about energy and energy out. I'm thinking of thermo, thermogen, oh, thermogenics. I'm thinking of dynamics. Anyway, yeah. so when we talk about because then there's the thermic effect of food, which is um, heat is caused by the by um, consumption of food. So you, you don't, when you early on in this journey, you don't think, oh, digestion creates heat, expends energy. So you need to factor that in as something that exp- the more protein you consume, high thermic effect of food. Why do you think your body temperature increases post meal? Why do you think um, people can feel warm? and hot, warmer after eating certain meals, especially high protein. Why do you think people suggest perhaps don't eat uh, a meal before you sleep? Leave one, two, three hours before because that raising in body temperature, it's antithetical to falling asleep because your body temperature, one, our bodies function better or that they function, that we can sleep better in lower temperatures relative to higher temperatures. So that sweet spot is, I think it's about 15 and 17 degrees Celsius. And... If you've raised your, your internal body temperature from the thermic effect of food from eating, then you may have trouble falling asleep because your body has to cool itself after eating because your body temperature wants to drop down in order to, to sleep soundly and to trigger that onset for sleep. So I think that that's something I didn't realize um, that I think is a, it's a nice little behavioral lifestyle change that you can make to improve your sleep quality without doing anything. Sleep's the best fucking resource you can get as well. It's, oh, yeah. good, it's a great performance enhancer, great recoveries. Recovery supplement as well. Why well, spend hundreds of dollars on s- supplements, I guess, as well, when, like in terms of recovery, when you can just fucking sleep eight hours and you feel a lot better. Yeah. It, that's a, that's another issue altogether. But, it is. Um, what sort of resources, in terms of with nutrition and stuff, what sort of stuff do you go to in terms of just like, as you're talking about with your diet and all that sort of stuff, like, I know you're talking about Lane Norton, but who, who are those sort of guys that you sort of watch? Well, he's one of them. Um, I think as long as much as people like to shit on universities, I've actually taken a lot from um, my studies in nutrition science at uh, my university and understanding the metabolism of, of, of fats, glucose, proteins, and the biochemistry behind it, I think has really added um, important foundations to my knowledge. So that gives a good structure. Um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick has been huge, huge. I have, I have a lot of, a lot of guys and girls. Um, let me, let me try and pull some up. So those are some, do you have, do you have any off the top before I think of some Uh, more? Oh, Dr. Peter Atiyah is, is amazing. In terms of nutrition, not as much. I think Lane, Lane Norton, probably one because he's more well known, um, not off the top of my head there's a lot of people but it's just it's not like one person where it's like alright which I don't think is a bad thing as well I think it can be quite dogmatic just like listening to one point of view yeah you, you've got to diversify diversify yeah. your income stream diversify your knowledge streams right yeah 100% 100% so guys and girls like that um, who else who else I'm just trying to look at my uh, my subscriptions here yeah found my fitness Dr. Rhonda Patrick is amazing um think who 
else. Yeah, man, you you got to understand this stuff um, because, like uh, Brett Bartholomew was saying, like go outside your field, even if you're just an S and C coach, go outside, learn about this, learn about that. Um, there will be compliments. Even you don't even have to be in this industry, but there's going to be other things you're going to learn in other industries that are going to aid you in the industry you're in in ways you you don't realize. No, hundred percent. It's and also ways you can't antici- uh, anticipate as well. Especially like nutrition is going to help your athletes as well. Even just as he was saying as well, Brett was saying to just be a better communicator in a lot of things. Like I think that also gets lost in the shuffle as well. Because if you like, if you can't talk well, which judging by this podcast, I'm, I haven't talked well for a You're little bit. You're fine, of time. bro. <laughs> yeah, good chat. Um. That's a big thing as well, like, which is also, you know, being empathetic, empathetic also, you know, taking stuff from a lot of different fields in there as well and, yeah, an amalgamation to one person. One person I, I would recommend is um, Ben Greenfield. Ben Greenfield, I bought his book Boundless. It's, fuck, he's, it's, it's unbelievable. He is, he's a wizard for this stuff, man. He is, he walks the walk, talks the talk. He's brilliant and he's a younger guy, I mean, in his 30s, family, but he's he's brilliant um i check him out uh yeah i just wanted to mention that yeah i'm gonna have to i know because i know a green ben greenfield but i've only heard him on like one or two podcasts and i think i need to oh yeah definitely check him out and you, you will be you'll dive in and you'll feel overwhelmed but uh it's all it's all part of it, oh man. i definitely will i i know what he's about like in terms of listening to him uh It'll be a lot of just, yeah, different stuff. But, hey, let's see, let's see where it takes us. Yeah, man. So, t- tell me more about... So, you're breaking down your strategy towards eating and then we're talking about reverse dieting. And you were... I think the thing about that is what I've what I've been learning is that a lot of people make the mistake when they you talked about, oh, if I just bounce back up to this high caloric intake after being at low calories, 22,000, whatever, 2,100... You were talking about, oh, if I just go up, that's probably not the best idea for you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think it's because it's also like I want to be better nutrition-wise. I just want to, you know, if I just go back to a ton of calories, it's also a little bit more weight gain as well. Whereas like if you build yourself up slowly and you start to reinforce or you, so you still enforce quality nutritional habits, yeah, which is something I've gotten better at through, through quarantine. quarantine. It's still... There's still times when like I could be better, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like you're gonna that that's gonna be the main sort of you know. You you realize too that you know you're consuming X amount of calories. This person consuming X amount of calories, and you're like, that's it. That's a deficit. Well, it, what I've learned is that a deficit and a surplus they're ranges. You have high high points of the deficit and low points of the deficit, and the same with the surplus. So it's a range that's that's in flux and on a day to day basis. And so I think people get very married, and I know I have in the past too. Excuse me, that you must consume X amount of calories exactly, or you will not you will not be in a surplus and not be in a deficit. But when we're trying to change your body, your body is one very adaptable metabolically. Two, it's a range. So your deficit might be like 2,000 to 2,300, right? So you might be in that midpoint. And so when you go back up or reverse diet back up, um, I mean, at, at least this is for me, like it's it's tempting to just, all right, I was consuming 4,000 calories a few months ago. I'm just going to plus 1,000 calories <laughs> just to get back there. Yeah. But what's going to happen? You're going to blow up, especially with fat, because you're going to be way... O- People think like you're gonna be way over your surplus. And people think the more, because you, you would have metabolically adjusted back down, mm. right? Your metabolic rate would have reduced when you're in a deficit. Um, like uh, incidental activity, like NEAT decreases, blah, blah, blah. So I think I'm kind of just problem solving and thinking out loud here what I've been learning. And it's that the mistake I've made when I was younger, or at least thinking it, is you're in deficit and you bounce back up. But, and, even when you're trying to be in a surplus, you're trying to gain gain muscle mass, gain weight, going too fast is a recipe for more fat gain because your body adjusts metabolically at each point. 
And just because you consume more calories doesn't mean you're going to build more muscle. Yeah, there's it's going to be an end range. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a point of maximal muscle protein synthesis mm. of being in po- what we call positive nitrogen balance. And that once you have maxed out that capability, then through protein intake specifically, and you're in a surplus, then if you just keep piling on more calories, depending on what type of calories, if it's glucose, it's just, you're just going to oxidize way more glucose yeah. or if it's, and some will be converted to fat, but not much. But if it's, if it's fat, then Four. that shit's just going to get stored away. Yeah, I understand. Which then makes you think, well, the body, classic bodybuilding diet, high carb, low fat, I thought that was, that was just shit. I just thought, you know, fat's important and fat is important, but I can see now how their style mm. works. Well, now I understand the nutrition science of it and how more glucose, more glucose oxidation, very minim- very little of it actually gets converted um, to fat, carbs to fat when you're in a surplus. It's called de novo lipogenesis, which is the creation of fat from, from glucose. However, it, it, fat, we, we don't have, uh, we, we don't have um, stores for fat except adipose tissue. We don't have like a, a liver and muscle to put fat in, right? So that stuff's just going to get pumped away in adipose tissue. You're going to create more adipocytes. And the thing that fucks with me is that once you ha- create a new adipocyte, you, can ne- you can't get rid of it. What? <laughs> so Fuck. a new fat cell called yeah. an adipocyte, once you create a new one, apparently you can't get rid of it. And in fact, all you can do is make them go smaller by taking... So they could be empty. Okay. Have yeah, no more fat yeah, yeah. in them. Okay. Yep. And, but then once they just get bigger and then they multiply. And then they multiply. So this is something like for you and me, if we just want to fuck off and blow up and just start going crazy <laughs> once we're ready to put more yeah. muscle mass on. And if we just go like, all right, let's go. Let's open the floodgates. Beefy boys. Beefyboys.com. <laughs> we're going to create a bunch more yeah. adipocytes. We're going to put more muscle on. But like how much less calories could we have consumed while <laughs> mitigating fucking getting fat? Yeah. When I was eating a lot, I was in like... I mean, it was like five thousand calories, forty five. I was eating a lot. <laughs> hey, not loads, <laughs> not loads. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, those are just listening to just hear us grunting. Can you imagine what they must be thinking? Well, it's uh, not a lot of uh, good things I imagine, but uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> flexing on them. That's what we're doing. Flexing on them haters. <laughs> them haters, man. No, nah, no, nah, that, um, that's a good point. Yeah, you can people who are eating, you can just eat too much and you're like fuck, like. I'm not gaining as much muscle because there's only, as you said, there's only a certain point in game. muscle, only a certain point in game fat. And if you're more highly trained, you can only gain less muscle because obviously when you've got your newbie gains, you're going to gain, you know, obviously new, all that sort of shit. Yeah. Anyways, you're going to gain more muscle when you first start training, when you, you know, build up. Yeah. You're not going to gain as much. Therefore, you've got to be more deliberate with your nutrition training in general. Yeah. 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 As you become more highly trained, as you, as you reach close to your genetic ceiling, um, I don't want to say it becomes more difficult, but it doesn't become easier. No, it doesn't become easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly It's right. not as easy as like... That would be probably a better choice of words. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. It doesn't... Generally, it doesn't become easier. But the more you learn, you can do it easier. Like this shit I've learned now, like I wish I knew this when I was younger. Like the big one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was a young basketballer, I didn't... I fucking... I must have been burning, Jesus, a huge amount of calories. <laughs> yeah, what was young Alex's diet... Well, like, do you remember like what you ate when you were younger? Uh, yeah. Let me let me have a think. Okay, one, I was definitely like, I, I was mal. I think I was mal uh, mal malnourished, and I wasn't eating anywhere near enough food. And so, let's have a look. Oh, I'll tell you what. So I grew up on fucking like, what was my first meal of the day? Breakfast. <laughs> fucking wheat bix and toast and something like that. Right. Oh, it's carby. Just. <laughs> And you realize there's fuck all protein in yeah. Wheat Bix. And you wonder why you're hungry an hour later. <laughs> so for those who don't know Wheat Bix, f- how would you describe it for Wheat Bix for people? I'm trying to think. Because I've only started having it because it's back in the day it was only gluten. You're having so. it again? No, nah, back in the day it was gluten, so I couldn't have it. It's like shredded, it's like shredded wheat. It's pretty much what it is. It's a high fiber, low sugar breakfast manufactured in Australia and New Zealand by the Sanitarium Health Food Company. Sanitarium. Oh, Sanitarium. F- oh, That's a Metallica reference. Oh, really? <laughs> Who would get that? 
I don't know, not a lot of people, but... <laughs> and so they, under the guise of like, oh, it contains a lot of B vitamins that help give you energy. Under the guise of B vitamins, they try and sell it as healthy. Um, but it's really just... I don't know, what the fuck is it made from? But that's also how like the um, the steak and eggs, meat and eggs, that all like keto breakfast came in as well by having high fat at the start of the day. Yeah. It was like that would suppress your hunger. Yeah. To the point where, you know, you could just go through the... Or you could just fast and just have like a high fat sort of like whatever it is but yeah that'd be one of the main well fat and protein is satiating yeah exactly as opposed to just carbs and fat and all like it's carbs by itself absolutely which, which, which for you, you as an athlete it was good because you could just eat more but then is it nourishing enough no well and also like maybe as like if you just look at it purely as an energy source like oh I just want to up my glycogen stores then sure okay it's okay but it's I need, we need protein. Protein can, makes up every single cell in the body, right? And if you are creating a lot of muscle damage, which I was as an athlete, I was weight training. I started weight training when I was like uh, 16 or something. And so I, I, and I was still having that kind of poor diet. And with the wheat bicks and the fucking toast, you know, you put your butter, you put, you might put your Nutella, you know. <laughs> Who the fuck has Nutella as the, if you're having Nutella for your first meal of the day, like some shit's gone wrong, right? Or you're just fucking off and just enjoying a cheat meal. I don't know. But <laughs> oh, I've done that a couple of times. So I'm, am I talking about you, Jeremy, here? Uh, you, you might be peering into it maybe a couple of years ago. My <laughs> no, but if I saw this quote, like if you eat like a kid, you're going to like perform... What is it? I don't know, man. Don't eat like a fucking baby, right? Don't eat like a kid no more, okay? We ain't kids no more. And so like you can still enjoy great yeah. food. Like, and I wish like I knew that information back then. I was having a wheat bix toast with Nutella. I might put some so butter, Nutella. It tastes fucking good, right? Butter and Nutella. Come on, son. No, I haven't had that. <laughs> Nutella peanut butter, son. Oh, I'm, I'm onto that. So now... Oh, that... Oh. <laughs> Oh wait, Nutella and peanut butter? Yeah. Oh, I might have done that a couple times in my life. That'll fuck you up, man. But uh, it's fucking tasty. It's high fat. Oh. High cu- high sugar. <laughs> put you in a coma, baby. <laughs> but hey, you're gonna enjoy getting in that coma. Oh, <laughs> you got, yeah, dive right in. Oh. <laughs> so like, um, when I would have pancakes, it'd be like, so <laughs> if you want to be a real like a real fat kid, so you'd have like Nutella, peanut butter, and or you'd have Nutella ice cream. Pancake <laughs> Sometimes during breakfast as well So my I used to have the, Not like every single Like it wasn't every single week Or whatever Just like once in a while Yeah But yeah There's some good Or there's some good eating Yeah man There's those uh, <laughs> That's some real Gluttonous eating But you know You enjoy that You, you reflect yeah, on those it wasn't every. It wasn't every week Or anything like that So No it was every second day It was yeah. okay <laughs> Some people eat like that Like oh You yeah. know what I My fucking dumbass did In Arizona I still wasn't eating too good Bro, I was, because I, when I was living and playing basketball in Arizona, right, I still didn't have my diet dialed in, right? And I'm like, I wonder why I got all my fucking gut issues when I was, <laughs> when I was older. Like, oh, this fucking right. Um, I, I made, actually, no, I, I think I was getting into nutrition more. So I was, I was trying to make, I think, like wheat pancakes, like, no, sorry, uh, non-wheat pancakes, like buckwheat, I think. Okay. Panca- no, I did, because they were brown and they didn't taste as good. Like a buckwheat pancake. Um, and I've had with all this fuck off maple syrup on it, <laughs> right? Some strawberries, and like I would have this as like my fucking second meal of the day or something. First meal of the day, I'm like, what are you doing, son? <laughs> Just carb loading the shit out of yourself. <laughs> Young sandals looking, at, so older sandals looking at younger sandals. Uh, Milk was a bad choice, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Mil- no, yeah, I used to have a cup of milk when I was a kid too. My parents, they give you a cup of milk from pump straight from the cow, yeah. all that lactose. You wonder why you fucking farting nonstop. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> shout shout out. Oh, you know that? <laughs> you know that's from fucking uh, fucking anchor man. Ah. And yeah, because right, you're because you're a sweet and wonderful man. You're like, well, what do they call you, Brick? And the Kranis <laughs> is like, well, it's because he looks like Brick. It's not because I look like Brick the Kranis. It's because Woody watched Anchorman and he's like, well, we'll just start calling him that. Oh, really? That's it? Yeah. But also, I don't know. People might think I look like Steve Carell. If they do, cool. If they don't, whatever. But yeah. Well, it is what it is. Man. Yeah, it is what it is. And ain't what it ain't. You look... 
<laughs> you look like Jeremy Bullers Hill. Let me keep taking you through my diet because <laughs> I know you definitely. Uh, I find it interesting, yeah. What was the next meal? Well, I tell you what, I know what happened in the night. The night, well, if you're at high school, if you're eating, what did you eat in school? I was, I had like fucking sandwiches. And I, yeah, I, sandwiches. I fucking hate sandwiches now, man. I never eat a sandwich. <laughs> I had a lot of fuck fuck, a sandwich. I had a lot of fucking tuna. Yeah, it's just easy. <laughs> and but people were like, go, ugh. They'd be like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like bread and tuna. Yeah, they're like, I'd have bread, tuna, and then maybe like a tomato sauce in there as well, like a real weird sort of pairing. What are we doing? To and our and kids, people, man? people like, ugh, you'd eat that, and I'm like, yes. But also because like people didn't like fish. People no, didn't like those kids who like they they stay the fuck away from it. They, <laughs> they would the smell. And also because they know it'd be coming hot with a tuna sandwich, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like, "Oh, hello," and I'd be like, "Well, I'm eating it." So. And you get a little snack. Would you get like a piece of fruit or like a like a bar? Like yeah, a like an like an apple. Yeah. Like something like that. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Same fruit. It's like no. No, I know, like a banana, mandarin. Yeah, but it'd be the same rotation. Oh yeah. You'd yeah, never yeah. see like a, a pessimum. No. Do you even know what a pessimum is? No. It's an orange Japanese, pretty, you know, uh, glucose heavy um, fruit, mm. right? It's just it's just a different fruit. But in your kid brain, all, <laughs> only five fruits in exist. In your fucking chimp kid brain. Yeah, you're right? Like <laughs> it's like you're cycling the same foods over and over again, like a machine, just the same over and over. You, you no wonder why you're so malnu- malnourished and you're... you're God... You malnourished fuck. What are you fucking eating? <laughs> yeah. Your DAC. <laughs> Your dog ass. <laughs> oh, sorry. So in the night, he, you all know my, my, my meal at like every night would be, almost yeah. every night. My mum would rotate some meals, but the, the one consistently I went to, it was a white rice with yeah. beef mince bolognese sauce. I think you've you've been familiar uh, pasta, with this one. Yeah, pasta. I would have... I would have some sort of protein as well and then just, you know, potatoes, that sort of stuff. Yeah, very much what you said. That, that's, that sounds like a good meal though. It tastes good <laughs> for about, it tastes, yeah, it tastes good. It's got, yeah. the, it's got the higher fat content from the, the, the beef, which is yeah. more saturated fat. Um, who knows where that, that, that type of beef came from? Um, I mean, that's what I'm concerned about now anyway, but <laughs> it would just be rice. Beef mints, I would have. I'll put some cheese on it too. You want oh. some lactose? So you would <laughs> oh, just. I would love that. Here were my vegetables: <laughs> no, cucumbers. I had fucking cucumbers oh, on the side. Okay. Yeah. We get a salad every now and again, but I wasn't making food back then. We might get a garden salad that was pretty good, maybe a yeah. couple times a month. You know how they say take. People don't know the Australian gut dietary guidelines are six servings of fruit and vegetable. No, six servings of fruit and vegetables uh, per day, if I recall correctly. Maybe it's just vegetables. Anyway. No, probably just vegetables. I think fruits, two to three. Oh, you're, okay. You're, you're right. Thank you. That's for adults. Yeah. Kids, I think it's like four or five. And one serving of vegetables is 75 grams. Um, and my this was my this is probably my <laughs> daily serve of vegetables. Some yeah. cucumber and a garden salad every couple of weeks. So you're doing already better than me. <laughs> really? <laughs> like my, my would, I still have salad every now and then, but like I was just, I was just getting in them cows. <laughs> Tell me. I don't. I don't know, just getting it like pretty much what you said. Like I would have a, a pasta, or like a chicken schnitzel, yeah, or like that sort of stuff. And like through, like I'd I'd be the same as you. I'd burn a shit ton of calories. Like I wasn't like a a non-active kid, yeah. But I just eat a lot, yeah. <laughs> and be like, and then like I started because I started going into like stuff because I played basketball through when I was younger, and then through like playing footy and stuff. I was like, all right, well I got to start eating a bit better. And then I went like really low, like went 70 kilos low. Yeah. And then I went back up and then, yeah, I don't know, just the person I am today. But Now we're here. Yeah, I just ate a bit better as well. But you, we definitely weren't eating enough vegetables. Yeah. That we definitely <laughs> didn't have good variety of foods. I had a, I had a lot of cheese. I don't know. <laughs> Too much, bro. <laughs> Too much. Like, yeah. I would just... A lot of bread, a lot of cheese. Bro. <laughs> I don't even know if I should say some of the stuff that I used to do as a kid. Oh, who cares? Like just weird food habits. Like you ever eaten in the shower? I've eaten in my room. That's not <laughs> I've eaten in the shower. How, how is that comparable? <laughs> what? Okay, so what did, you, what did you eat in the shower though? <laughs> oh, shit. He said I ate in my room. <laughs> Bro, that's not the same thing at all. Uh, similar, similar-ish. <laughs> just, we, just, you just... What did you eat in the shower? And... I got had just just 
It's just silly, man. It's just why would you do that as a kid? Because you, you just like fuck it. Let me just take this block of cheese and just <laughs> <laughs> let me hey, just start it. eating it. Yeah. You know, wh- wh- and you get this bullshit ass tasty block of cheese, right? Have you seen that stuff? It's just a block of hunk of yellow. Yeah. Oh. Right, and you <laughs> slice into it, and you pick it up, and it flops around. And, it, and I'm not talking about the 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 slice cheese where it's in the plastic. No, I know you exactly that what you're back. talking about. Yeah. That is next level shit. That's some good shit. Now, what I mean next level shit, I mean next level shit. Oh, you mean like not? Yeah, okay. Right. I like it, but yeah. And they put it in the sandwich, and they they tear it open, and they flop that plastic bit of who knows what the hell is in that thing that ain't cheese bro well it's like for the american listeners like nacho cheese and it's like if you get in like a i've seen america like a you know a tub or whatever or like a a spread and you're like (laughs) getting that you don't know what kind of shit's in that but so and then you'd have your sandwich for lunch in high school you'd have some bullshit ass sorry sorry mum um, you know, it's, it's a fine sandwich. I just didn't like it. Oh, I loved my food. I wasn't complaining. <laughs> I don't complain. I don't complain about a lot of food that I eat. So, yeah. Well, I'll eat it. <laughs> I guess you enjoyed it. Um, in hindsight, you realize, of course, yeah, that uh, you know, you the probably the best meal, the most nutrient dense meal, was at the end of the day when your parents cooked it for you. Right? Yeah, I'll say. But the rest. You were just scavenging <laughs> and just take whatever you could find and whatever bullshit ass food you can find. And uh, you wonder why five, ten years later, you might have certain nutrition habits that aren't the most resourceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man. The things, the things you do as a kid, the things you eat as a kid. What else? What else did you eat? Yeah, that, and then just like, I'd have like ice cream after dinner. I'd have like all that sort of stuff, yeah, and then just people like, still do that just, now. Yeah, it's just dessert sort of stuff. But now it's so different. Like now, like I would never eat like meat or nuts and vegetables yeah, for breakfast exactly. before. Now, yeah. but now it's like consistent, lean meat, kangaroo, um, a cornucopia of vegetables. Oh, that's what I got to fucking tell you. I went to the shops uh, yesterday. Yeah, got some kangaroo. Kangaroo, but. Crocodile sausages. What? I saw, cro- <laughs> I saw crocodile sausages at Coles. T A C. There's some fucking shit going down, man. That's crocodile. Crocodile sausages. Where? I've, I've, not uh, the supermarket. Where the K Ruiz? I kid you not. What? Like a Woolworths Coles? Coles. <laughs> Did you get some? I, I'll go get it next time. Report back. I I, I didn't want because I look. I was already I, I was already. Blown over, like, mind blown by the fact. What time? What? Sorry, what time? <laughs> what sorry. type? No, not, no. Oh, sorry, I got excited. Um, <laughs> Casey Drew's listened to this, like, you're not listening to him. <laughs> She's not listening, probably. But what type of cut of crocodile was it? I don't know. Crocodile? It just said crocodile sausages. Oh, sausages, that's what I mean. Yeah. I don't know what type of cut it was. Oh. Or sorry, well, what, like. Should we be eating that? I don't know. People eat some weird shit, man. We, uh, I, uh, we had I know bat. kangaroo. I, uh, I know. We, had, we had a bat to start this whole thing, but... Uh. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. And I say that because I was being very antag- antagonistic, but... <laughs> yes. Yes. I um, but yeah, I don't know. What is the crocodile protein content? I'm sure it's through the fucking roof. Have you seen it? those fuckers? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking. Like, if you ate that... They're, they're fucking dinosaurs, man. <sighs> you don't want to fuck with them. No. But you, if you, I think there's something to eat strong animals. Yeah. Eat killer animals. Eat wild animals. Like, if we're going to eat animals. Eat those animals. Eat the kangaroos. Eat the, eat the wild animals. Yeah. That, that The ones that aren't endangered. I'm not saying eat endangered animals. Absolutely, <laughs> I, do, I, I, will, I do not co-sign eating endangered or threatened species. Yeah. Um, but... I'll have to report back, though, and let you know. Yeah. About what, yeah. And Lock, Lock Kennett as well. I expect Lock Kennett to eat those fucking crocodile sausages, son. Who? You're in this, you're in this K-Roo conspiracy as much as all of us. Yeah, <laughs> you're eating this fucking shit with us. <laughs> so, because crocodile's most valuable body part is their skin, while crocodiles might not have an obvious choice for your next healthy weeknight dinner, the meat has provided incredibly lean, full of protein and low in cholesterol. So it's very lean. They eat it up in the Northern Territory where they're... Where crocodiles are, co- are as common as pigeons, okay. apparently. 
Uh, pigeons. <laughs> you know people eat pigeons? It's called, um, what's it called? Quail. No, bro, it's a fucking... It's, oh, a, little, it's a little duck, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that... I don't know if pigeons and quail are <laughs> like... It's it's unsourced, it's a, it's, which oh, we love. It's not, it's, it's not a duck, sorry. Uh, we're both idiots. <laughs> we're both just chimps, aren't we? Uh, it's a d- duck. Oh, well. A common quail is, is a little bird. It's a game okay. bird. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, he looks like something I've seen in the street before. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, no, he's different. Anyway. Look, the French eat snails, so what, what are we all talking about here? What are we all talking about, man? <laughs> People eating ants and making ant protein. You can get ant protein. You want some ant protein, bro? Oh, gee, that'd many, be good. You know how many ants there are? I've crushed a couple of ants, but wouldn't mind eating a couple of ants. So, I can get the super ants. You know how many ants you would have? A 3.5 ounce serving of red ant supplies 14 grams of protein. Oh. How, how much is 3.5 ounces? Who does ounces? How is that? The, the Americans, ounce? those fucks, because they're not in the metric system. Get on, get on the metric system, son. Hop on the train. <laughs> Hop on the Stop train. the riots. <laughs> Hop on the metric system train. We got bigger problems. <laughs> You've been on your ounces and pounds for too long. It's time to get on the kilos and or meters and just to wear yourself, son. Tell them. <laughs> Done. It's 100 grams for 3.5. So, 100. That's a lot of fuck. 100 grams. Of ants. For 40, yeah. uh, that's okay. Um, anyway, should we eat... <laughs> how many... Okay, so we know there's 50 million kangaroos in, yeah. in the country. Of Australia, how many crocodiles in Australia? Jesus oh. Christ, there's a hundred thousand in the Northern Territory. Because they, then they also had at the shops like venison and stuff like that, and just like oh yeah. So uh, venison, I'd probably be less likely to have. The crocodile would be interesting. Look, it's kind of a when you're in Rome, try it out. Yeah, when you're amongst the fucking architecture. Seen all that shit. Might as well have some. Oh, venison. They got venison too. They got like elk deer. Yeah. Wow. That'd be interesting now to that, have. That'd be interesting to have. That's a proper game animal. Like, I wouldn't have it, but I don't know. Just Why? I don't know. Well, I if you don't have an answer, then why wouldn't you have it? I don't know. Just, it reminds me of, it's ve- like, it reminds me of like veal and stuff. Like, with venison. And stuff. I don't know if venison and veal are, that just might be a very idiotic statement I've just made, but. Well, veal is a, is a baby, or, um. I've had veal. Sorry, no, no. Yeah, no. I've had veal before, and it's yeah. So veal is like a, a young car, uh, a young cattle. Oh, well, it's like a calf, so it's like a baby cow. Yeah. So, I think th- that's I've tried it before, and that's something that I probably wouldn't have again because I don't think we need to consume like young yeah. animals. Yeah, it's just like I think if we're gonna consume animals, let's try and do it in somewhat of an ethical way and consume the ones at the end of their life cycle. Yeah. The older ones that are passed on their genes. Um. And this is why when people go hunt in, in places around the world, the tags you get to hunt, you're only a- able to hunt a certain specific type of or age type of uh, deer or elk. Um, and these are the, they rank them by the size of their horns um, and they're graded on the system and you can only kill like the older ones that are passed on their, their DNA to other, uh, you know, to their next They've had kids, basically, um, which I think is uh, an ethical yeah, way to go about it. Definitely think it's good. But venison is uh, elk, deer, or antelope, whereas veal is a baby yeah, cow. Baby. Okay. It's different. All right. Crocodile, on the other hand, <laughs> saltwater crocodile population is 100,000 to 200,000. That doesn't seem like many. Yeah, it's not a lot. Um, but they might be getting them from, I don't know, Somewhere around the world. Wait, is Australia the only place that has crocodiles? And everyone else has alligators? Come on, Jeremy Borson. Yeah, that's what I think. I think I could have said anything you would have agreed with me. Hey. Oh, no, we're wrong. There's American oh, crocodile, there's the, there's the oh, freshwater crocodile, America. there's the Philippine oh. crocodile. Okay. There you go. Man, that's really interesting. I've never heard or seen... Um, is it... Is it... Is it Siru? <laughs> <laughs> it, should, it should be. <laughs> Hey, those Kru fat cats have had it too good for too long. Oh. Crocodiles coming in now. Saltwater crocodiles have come back with a vengeance. The total Australian population <laughs> is currently estimated to be 100,000 Northern Territory alone, and probably more than 150,000 Australia wide. With the rise in number, has become an increased fear. Oh, so maybe we need to whack a couple. Oh, I reckon we need to whack a couple. You think so? How many? At least ten. <laughs> let, let them know. 
<laughs> so you send the, you send a message to ten of them, and then it's like, well, they'll tell their friends. Yeah, man, I don't think they give a fuck. Look at this thing, bro. Oh shit, that oh, was this a, comes up. That was a bad reveal. <laughs> I'm trying to show Jeremy Borzillo the photo. photo. Say hello to my little friend. Yes, coming in with the heat. I'm trying to show Jeremy Balls these have you if you just look up a crocodile in your spare time, you know, just when you're hanging out, chilling, maybe you're what listening to the podcast right now. There's a um an Instagram page called Nature is Metal. Ooh. That's some good shit. You think the shit you're going through is tough? <laughs> Go on uh <laughs> Oh gee. Oh he's slowly appearing, like the projector's slowly coming on. <laughs> Holy shit. Come on, look at those teeth. That's not even proper yet. Just wait till it really comes on. Come on, son. Oh, you pop uh, up. I'm not going to sign up to your newsletter. I'm trying to talk some chimps over here. <laughs> They're cock blocking me. Look at this fucker. Fuck. It's a dinosaur, bro. What did you what did you just say that we can look <laughs> what we can look up? Nature is metal. Oh, that's right. On Instagram, yeah. That's got some good shit. We've been podcasting as well a long time. All, I'm liking this all day. All day. <laughs> I don't think we'll beat the Dave O'Brien today, but uh, no, nah, we 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 got things to do. <laughs> things to do. Nature is metal. Um. So, jeez, two point three million followers. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking shout out to Rogan for getting getting them on yeah. that. Um. So, if you you th- if you think. That what we do to animals is bad. Oh, you Just haven't seen nothing. See what yet. animals do to animals. A hummingbird somehow trapped itself and died in the fork of this plant. I what the? F- oh what? fuck! It impaled itself into a plant. But you know what? If if animals had like a page for human beings, can you imagine? Let's flip it around. <laughs> Let's imagine now there's an. There's like another species of animals watching us and they have their own page called like humans are metal, <laughs> right? And can you imagine the things you would see? Oh, and there's shootings, stabbings, people... Like this is how people, other people, other. people impaled through, yeah. through things. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, no. I don't think everyone is bad. Like, we're watching these uh, little... It looks like a grizzly bear. And these little baby grizzly bears trying to get up. Up on the snow. Wow, look at this little thing. Oh, wow. Look at it protect... Oh, my God! Oh, shit. Jesus! Damn, nature! You scary! <laughs> so, what we just saw was the grizzly... There was there was these gri- little mini grizzly bears. Little baby grizzly bears. And then it couldn't get up. It's like... It's, it's pretty cute. But it can't get up. It's struggling. And then it's running down because it's afraid of the car. Right, there's a car driving past. It looks at the car, tries to come back. The mother grizzly bear comes down and starts charging the car. Oh, Get out of here, bro. A grizzly bear just tried to charge a car, man. You think you can stand a chance? Hell no. <laughs> oh, my God. This is about a horse. When a stallion is ready to mate, they get super aggressive, as is the mare, and when she's not accepting of his advances. Oh, shit. According to the user who submitted this video, the stallion who was worth 45,000 US dollars... Oh, Jesus oh. Christ! Oh! You got knocked! <laughs> oh my God! You got knocked the fuck out! <laughs> Bro. Oh. oh, shit. <laughs> the horse died. Oh, dear, fuck. Probably shouldn't be laughing then at that. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. We just watched a horse... It looked like it, that man. They would be so confused, like, "Oh my yeah. god!" Yeah. That's yeah. some. De- it was a defensive horse kick had been clocked at s- some defensive horse clicks had been clocked at seventy five miles per hour, which is over a hundred k's, which would place would certainly kill a human if placed correctly. And why you need oh, to be yeah. very careful around these animals. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Look how fucking. Oh, it's coming out again. And they're on leashes, right? So they... Oh, oh my oh, God. Fuck. Shit the second time. Damn. What the fuck is this photo? And it's got all the... F- yeah, is that an octopus in inside of a, f- a, a, a buckhead, which is a type of fish's mouth? A link cod with a gullet of full octopus. Holy shit. What is that? 
We could do this all day. This ain't even the surface, son. <laughs> oh my god. Nature is something. That's a great white shark. Don't go swimming, kids. Look at him. He's trying to wrestle a great white shark with. The, it's just a photo. That's it. Bro, that's. Thor can, Thor can deadlift that. It's a thousand pounds, man. He could deadlift this great white shark. Did you hear about Thor and um, Eddie Hall going to do a boxing match? Oh, my God. <laughs> that is... Uh, oh, as if it wasn't orchestrated from the start. What? Like, I reckon that was a bit of money, money. They were trying to just, you know... St- oh, like, did they, did they have, like, a rivalry they were, they were oh, kind well, of it was pretty much, building? Well, Eddie was pretty much, don't deadlift 501. Like, I deadlift 500. I'm not the best. Yeah. Look at this fucker. <laughs> oh, you can't even see properly. Ooh. This bear is... Jack, fifteen hundred pounds of fuck you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That is a talking cheeps. While the polar bear is taller, if they were to stand on their hind legs, the average size of each species is essentially the same. This is a Kodiak bear. This is a real creature, a Kodiak bear. I have never, ever. The Kodiak bear, sometimes known as the Alaskan brown bear. Inhabits the Kodiak Archipelago in southwest Alaska. It is the largest recognized subspecies uh, of the brown bear and one of the two largest bears alive. Yeah, that's a. Uh... It's a whale. But, okay. <laughs> you think you can stand a chance? Kodiak bear eats a whale. <laughs> but what type of whale, though? There's this. It's kind of small whales. Yeah. Oh my god! And people go hunting all the time in in territories where there's there's bears like these. Like, you don't want none of that. No, you don't want none of that. None of that smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You don't want none of that smoke. That brown bear smoke. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just it's a beached oh, whale. It's just eating a beach whale. And the bears are just. Oh. Jeez. That's a huge. It doesn't even look like a whale. It just looks like a giant. Wow. Man, nature is just something so special. It's so it interesting to learn about animals. That doesn't even look real, that one. Oh my god. Yeah, man. You can't, yeah. I, I can't keep looking at this, man. Yeah. This, this, this is uh, no, it, it's another, it's a rabbit hole. Yeah, it's, it is. It is. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, I'm still getting over that. Jeremy Borzillo. I mean, I mean, we're <laughs> what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I don't know. What are you gonna do? In life, uh, well, <laughs> after this, I'll just you know look some more nature's metal, but you know stuff, and just digest that content. <laughs> Think it's a good place to end it. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, We've Fain- gone. We've gone nearly three hours. So yeah, this is the longest podcast I've ever been on. Yeah. I've been on three podcasts, so that, this is the longest. What's What's the third one? Oh, uh, my, all mine. Yeah, all yours. <laughs> um, I want to thank you, Mister Sandalis, for having me on your podcast. I appreciate it. Hopefully, people took something out of this. <sighs> what I took out of it is we're just enjoying. You know, it's going to take us to different conversations. Other people, it's going to be different. You know, thoughts, feelings, emotions. With me, we're looking at nature's metal pages and talking shit. So. Um, hopefully everyone took something out of it. Uh, you can find me at uh, at Jeremy Borzillo on Instagram, Jeremy Borzillo on Facebook. Uh, fucking, uh, that's pretty much it. Like a Snapchat and all that sort of shit. But I will. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Um, man. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You've it's good to it. see you, man. Yeah. It's good to catch up again. It's Fuck been a it. while. It's good to it's good to see people, man. I yeah. fucking miss like seeing. Absolutely, man. I miss so. this, man. It's been a couple months. <laughs> a couple of weeks. We're back. Soon enough. Hey, yeah. man, we've been back. I've been back, man. Yeah. Don't stop, man. You've been back. Look yeah. at you. You're taking uh, the time. You you staying on your staying on your shit. Um. Whew. Yeah. It was a crazy conversation <laughs> all over the place. Let's get that rubber hole going next time. Thank you, Jeremy. We'll do this again sometime later this year. Uh, yeah. We'll keep talking, chimps. <laughs> See ya. Sign up. Say that. <laughs> Sheesh. Fuck, I'm going to take a massive piss. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said that earlier. Nah, it's all right. I love it. Trying to implement the new things I've been learning, like 
when I've cut, tried to lean down in the past, even just little mini cuts, um, I I didn't understand the importance of keeping protein intake really high. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't understand the importance of, you know, to mitigate muscle wastage and maximize muscle protein synthesis when you're trying to lean out, cut body fat. Um, and maintain as much muscle mass as possible, you need to keep your protein intake high. We're talking like 2.5 to 3 times grams of protein um, per kilo of body weight yeah. of lean mass. So if you like weigh 100 kilos, you got 15% body fat, that's 85 grams times, for example, 3, 8, 6, 12. It's like 230, 100, 230 grams of protein. Does that make sense? No, 100%. Um, the thermic effect of food, exactly right. Like That's going to help you. Um, well, the thermic effect of food is going to protein. Sorry, is, uh, for protein, yeah, but, and it's going to help you cut some weight as well. Just because of like, if you're having more protein, it's going to be a lot easier in weight loss. But then again, like some people can go a high carb diet and they're fine. Some people can go a low carb. Yeah, it's all yeah matter of preference. Well, it depends what you want to happen. If you, if you yeah. want to mitigate muscle wastage, if you want to maintain as much muscle mass as possible when you're in a de caloric deficit, yeah. you need to keep protein intake high. You need to have constant pulses of um, you know, 30 to 50 grams of protein. Make sure you get the full amino acid spectrum, especially essential amino acids, so you can be in a positive nitrogen balance, um, which just basically describes uh, more protein synthesis and degradation. Um, uh, that's kind of the stuff I've been learning from Lane, Nor Lane Norton especially. Do you, do you follow much of him? Uh, yes, I do. I like Lane Norton. He's, uh, he's fucking brilliant. I think Lane Norton... I like Lane Norton because he calls out a lot of bullshit and he's just very matter-of-fact and like... Yeah. I think... Yeah, he, he does put out a lot for the fitness industry as a whole and I think people see his message and they sort of, you know, judge him based on like, you know, online sort of things. It's He only wants everyone to just, you know, get better as a whole and it's like he's calling out people that are fucking thieves and people that you know lying and lying yeah. and a dog shit and just like <laughs> dacs and stuff like that and dacs dog ass cunts that's, uh, <laughs> that's an msc <laughs> hey we're getting the ball rolling that's an MS msc sort he's of a that. dac he's a dog ass cunt <laughs> that's like <a> <laughs> uh, i ain't heard of that man shout out strength culture for shout that. out melbourne strength culture <laughs> one of the best powerlifting gyms in Melbourne. And Woody won't like me calling them out, but... Uh, Why? Well, I'll get coached by them. Mr. Charles... Oh, oh that, yes. Mr. Charles Afanasi. Yeah, man. Uh, Let's collaborate. Let's work boys. together. Yeah. They're doing great stuff. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, and I think also... Uh, with Lane Norton, he has had success with a lot of people as well. And there's... He's had his personal... Life. It's all it's all a big sort of fucking... Like, they shouldn't judge him on his personal life. They should judge him on his, you know, coaching. And his coaching's fucking good. He's got great information. He knows his shit. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I I'm mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not even familiar with the personal stuff you're referring to, but like... Oh, we don't need to go into no, it. No, we yeah. don't. But just like assessing the individual as like an, as an expert and their knowledge, yeah. like I'm learning a lot and yeah. it's very practical. Um, but you walked in with a whole bunch of books, Jeremy Bozil. You want, you want to break down what you brought in because uh, you have been voraciously reading in this time. Yeah. Uh, of restrictions now have we started <laughs> is that a call back to ethan wilson <laughs> <laughs> a little bit yeah oh actually no um my yeah. last podcast guest yes jeremy we have started talking chimps can i give you a um a pump up first of all can i can i just say some nice things inflate, about you can inflate the tires a little all bit. right so alex um during this period so i've been listening to a lot of your content and um so mm. Orphic Education. So first of all, not even talking chimps. You've been doing a lot of stuff. No, for those who don't know, I, I've managed to create a second podcast with um, Matt Whipbrook and Alex Karamuz at Orphic Education, uh, which is all, more on the topic on health, wellness, fitness, getting the best health and wellness fitness um, coaches in the country and the world and chatting to them just to give some context. Yeah, and the first episode was obviously like, you know, Woody, uh, Locke Wilmot, Carl Goodman, Mia Fazali, who I reckon would be a good sort of um, Orphic Education Guest in terms of stoicism. Mm. Uh, who else is on there? Uh, oh, um, Sean Ryan Baker. Everton. Um, oh, Ryan. Yeah, yes, yes. We, we had, to, for people who don't know those names, think heavy hitter coaches and yeah. owners of gyms around Australia. Yeah, Athletes Authority is one of the best and obviously Woodford SSC is Have one of the best. Have you seen that facility, bro? <laughs> yeah. If I lived in Sydney, I would get my yeah. ass down there. I'd be training there six out of seven days, probably seven out of seven <laughs> days. But yeah, no, nah, um, 
yeah, and as I said, like you've been putting out some really awesome content, so I think people should check it out. Um, I listened to the Brett Bartholomew interview yesterday, really rated it. Mm. Um, and I think Brett puts a lot of good points out there, uh, especially the fact that like we as S and C coaches don't need to fucking go into S and just stay in, in our lane. We can also venture out into other fields, and you know, he was talking about it is okay to fail. It is okay to just you know. If you put yourself out there and you fail, it's no big deal. Like, you can always, you know, pick yourself up and go again. You can always, like, do other shit. You can always learn other shit from other people. Um, so, yeah, I really... And it was cool also that he um, gave you props at the end of the interview, which I thought was pretty cool. Like, he, he didn't need to, but no, that, that was uh, fucking pretty I cool. I didn't expect that. That was... Um, uh, I just had to uh, keep composed and just say thank you when someone like that gives you such a, such a compliment. Because, you know, I feel like a guy like that Guys like that, they don't really, they don't give out a lot. Yeah, and it's not that they they don't want to. It's just there's so many fucking people they interview. Yeah, there's so many people. So yeah, yeah um, shout out to you. And I've uh, and I've been listening to all of these podcasts as well. And you know, you've gone like you had Ivan on, you had George on. How do you say George's last name again? It's like, Booyos! Booyos! I like how you say it. <laughs> it's like how you say in the live streams, you go, Rody Dody. And I, that makes me laugh as well. Because this is how you fucking say it. You've seen the solo live yeah. chips. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how you say, you go, Rody Dody. And I'm like, ah, oh, fucking, that's a shit. I love how you remember that. There's, if you're listening, Rody Dody, shout out. It's just some random YouTube uh, fan. And then, um, yeah, and I'm listening. So the um, Jademans, the Kranis, who else is on there? Ton, a ton of other people. Oh, Casey Drew as well. Dave O'Brien. Dave O'Brien, yeah. And then the J one was good because I was shopping. I was at the shops, and then I was listening to your um, podcast because I'm an antisocial fuck. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and I was listening to that, and then um, you said you gave me a shout out, and I was like, oh, oh. So I'm just like getting some watermelon. I'm like, oh, nice. And then just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, went into other shit, so. I'm getting some watermelon <laughs> in winter, by the way. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, low calorie shit. Uh, yes. I don't know. Is it, anyway. No. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I really rated it. And, um, Appreciate it. Yeah, and I, like, you're, it's just, it's been really good. So, I want to say um, thank you for all the stuff you've been doing. And, yeah, really appreciate it. It's, you know, I've gone, done a ton of walks, tons of runs, just listening yeah. to your shit. So, you be telling me. Yeah, that's uh, and I and I give you sort of playback sort of stuff. I'm like, yeah, Alex, I love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. So my books, a long sort of thank you. Turn around to my books. So yeah. I've been reading. I so first of all, um, at the end. So when when we closed down. So when we was that March, early March. Yeah, early March. So I Jeez. I was here, you know, just Jeez. chilling. Went home. And I sort of thought to myself, sort of what Ethan sort of did a couple of last episode. Yep. What do I, what do I need to do to get better in this period? And there are tons of things because I'm not a perfect individual. But one of those things was I need to read a lot more. Two of those things. Two of those things. Sorry. I need to read a lot more, and I need to pick some low-hanging fruit mm -hmm. in terms of the aerobic variety. So I need to, like, I need to probably something that's going to help my lifting is going to be me doing more aerobic work and me doing more um, low intensity sort of shit. So just trying to, you know, get my heart health better, just try and be a better functioning human. Awesome. So we're humans first, we're athletes second. So, and I've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I don't even know who to attribute it, the quote to. Yeah. I've heard Jake Tura, who's a SNC coach in the States, who Melanda, shout out to Melanda, she'll know who I'm talking about. But, Coming on soon. Um, yeah. So anyways... Stoicism is a big sort of thing, and keep talking. I've been listening to a lot of the live um, on Thursday afternoons, a lot of the live chats that the Stream Culture Boys are putting out there. And one of their um, clients, who's also a um, lecturer, is Dr. Pete Coleman, who Hold on, yeah, it's good. Camera just decided to oh, it shit itself. Shit itself. <laughs> good old shit. You are watching talking or listening to talking chimps do you expect us to behave do you expect a chimp to behave in a zoo and how are you gonna expect us to behave we're in a fucking zoo it's called the fucking planet spinning around in a marble hurling through space wondering when the fuck we're gonna get off this ride never <laughs> we're stuck and we're in a milky way which is in another universe in another universe in another universe in another universe